Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting November 28th, 2018 at 6.04 in the municipal offices in South Deerfield. Um, first, we'd like to do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Would you all please rise? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first uh, item on our agenda is a hearing at 6 p.m. for Brian Atherton, owner of Two Feathers Restoration, for a Class Two license clarification. I see, Mr. Atherton's here. Yep. Welcome. Good evening. Um, I'd like to go over the chain of events for our audience and for the board. Um, at some point. I'm not sure if it was a year or so ago, um, Mr. Atherton wanted to open a business for trailer restorations. And um, he went to the Zoning Board of Appeals to get a, a special permit to repair vehicles according to our zoning bylaws. Um, there was discussion about the number of vehicles that were going to be there, and the number of 12 kind of came up. <clears throat> so after that was approved, uh, Mr. Atherton applied to the uh, Deerfield uh, Planning Board for site plan review. Uh, the, at the site plan review, um, Mr. Atherton uh, said that he was going to restore uh, trailers and uh, things of that sort. Then afterwards, Mr. Atherton came to the select board and asked for a Class II license because he wanted to sell uh, trailers and without a Class II license, he would not be able to transfer titles. Um, and since then, um, he's, uh, we restricted that Class II license to trailers only. Uh, Mr. Atherton has come back to the board uh, a number of times and wanted to change that and get the restriction moved because he says with that restriction, it makes it you know, useless to him. So um, I guess at this time, uh, what I'd like to suggest is that <clears throat> although Mr. Atherton does not need to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals for the sale of used vehicles um, because that's a matter of right because of the facility has is under 4,000 square feet. But because the information that was presented to the planning board was insufficient uh, for the sale of used vehicles, uh, that's where he's going to need to go back to the uh, planning board for site plan review for the sale of the two vehicle uh, sale of used motor vehicles. Uh, so I guess until that time, unless you have something to add to it, uh, that's the, the path that you're going to need to go down, and uh, then we can address removing the restriction for that license. Uh, this has already been addressed, and I'm going to let her speak on this behalf. Well, sure. I just want to, you know, I want to talk about the license a little bit. We talked about sure. the, the class two. So, you know, uh, my read on Mass General Law in this section, and I gave you a copy of it, is that it basically allows the the sale of motor vehicles that's in in on the face of the law that's what it is so i guess i would suggest if you feel that more information is necessary that you can't leave the license as it is with the restriction on it you either okay. need to rescind the license or you would need to you know grant the license in the full authority of mass general law you can't right. um you know okay. you can't basically say this is mass general law but we're going to change change it a little bit okay. which is what just to clarify that where that came from is we at the time of the application for the class two license we did get advice from town council could we put a restriction on it and we were advised that we could and if you're saying that different you you can you can put a restriction on for the number of vehicles you can put a restriction on where the vehicles are located on the property in the front of the building behind the building but you okay. can't restrict you can't restrict what mass general law would okay. allow within sure. the context of that okay. that section that's okay. right you I'm, can't so right. it's saying motor vehicles um, if you have a question about whether you should allow the sale of motor vehicles there, then you know okay. that's that's valid. But you can't give the license and then restrict the sale of motor vehicles. Okay. And well, in that case, then I guess that we should move to rescind the license until uh, site plan or approval has been uh, granted 
for the sale. Uh, to clarify this, when this application was applied, the vehicle information was included, and you required me to remove that language in order to approve this license at that time. Uh, you, you might have had the language on there, but you didn't get proper site plan uh, approval, and that's why you need to do that before you we get have asked me to do numerous things and those have been done and been clarified and has continued to been an issue at this point. So each time I come back to the board, an additional item has been applied to me. It's, that's not true. Uh, every time you is. come back, we've said the same thing. I spoke on your behalf to the planning board not to have you do stormwater review and things of that nature because you were only going to be selling these trailers. Uh, there were a lot of things in our bylaws, I shouldn't say a lot, there are a few items in our bylaws that just weren't addressed because you were not, had nothing to do with motor vehicles. And since that's not the case, in a sense, it's a change of use. You need to go back to the planning board for site plan review before we can grant you a class two license. I believe I've already been to the planning board on this issue. You have been. And it's already been addressed with that board and sent back to you. It was only for trailers only. That's what it was all about. Okay, your issue that you've brought up has been a discussion based on a oil water separator on this area. That's is just, that still the issue? That's just part of it. You need to go, this is the, the board of selectmen. You have to deal with the planning board for that issue. Okay, but if I go back to the planning board, as I've already done, they have again stated this is not their issue, they don't see an issue, and send it back to this board. So I'm getting... That, that's not true. Now you're mixing things up. The planning board does not have anything to do with the Class II license. They, have, they won't even discuss that. They're just going to discuss what you want to do on the property and things of that sort. A lot of the things that are in the site plan review, you've already been through. Those sure. probably will be noted, said, yeah, well, that was already done and complied with. Sure. But there were parts that you didn't, and that's why you need to go back and do that. And once that's done properly, then you can come back and we'll give you the license unrestricted. Can you outline those details? Because as again stated, when I've attended the meeting and I've explained exactly what my intent with this license is, again, they've discussed it and sent me right back to where we are right now, to you. That's not true because I also am on that planning board and you do not, did not discuss the motor vehicle issue. It's always not been an issue. It's always been the trailers, the trailers, the trailers. And that's where the issue lies. So if you go back to you go back to the planning board for site plan review, and you tell them what you want to do, and they'll tell you what you need to do, or you ask them, or you tell them what you want to do, they will tell you what you need to do to comply. And then I'm sure it won't be that big of a deal. And then you can come back, and um, you'll be all set. So, can you enlighten me on what's supposed to be changed on this property? That's a planning board issue. That's not a right. select board issue. And it's just kind of interesting that I came to this board with what I expected to be, you know, hey, what do I need to do? I've gone and done those things. So well, I'm afraid well, that I'm going to go back to the planning board again for a second time and be told the same thing again. You won't be. Well, if, if you ask for when you go to the planning board this time and you ask for motor vehicle sales, I, I, don't, I don't know for sure if you've gone and asked for that before, but if well, you actually, have, yeah. um, or if you haven't, if you ask for them and they give you this list of stuff to deal with, you go through that, get a check off on that, come back. If they're okay with the use, I'm thrilled to give you a, a license to yeah, sell. Yeah, because I mean, as far as the planning board is concerned, we went there for the site plan those are already approved parking spots, regardless yes. of how they're used. Correct. So they're already pre-existing at this point. Yep. And I think that's where that was based off of, not, hey, you gotta modify it or something of that nature. So nothing was explained to me further, as I recall. Yeah, I'm not a planning board so member. Kinda... I don't know what the requirements <laughs> are for, for that, uh, for an automobile place or review of that, but if you yeah. get blessings from them, I'm happy to give you a license. Sure. Okay. okay. I think it's fair. It's it would be to your benefit to clarify that you are not working on motors. You are yeah, working no, on. Right. You're just selling. You have yeah, motorized yeah. vehicles that are, you are no, working are. on versus a trailer. Right. Right. And so, if you get that clarified, then I think everyone will be on the same page. 
Right. Yeah. And at this but point, that's where it's at. It, I can understand your frustration. Yeah. You yeah. Like you've gone there, you've gone here. <laughs> right. You, they go there and they say this, and you. I, I just don't I understand. Want to keep you. <laughs> that I understand that. I think that you're at the you're at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And you're getting closer. <laughs> I just want to <laughs> but when, end it. But you have to understand that the planning board stuff is separate from this board. Oh, but I get that. What else you're going to need to to demonstrate to this board when you come back if you're not going to do any repairs there? As a class two license holder, you are responsible to repair vehicles under the Lemon Law. So yep. you have to demonstrate, and not just my buddy John, you have to bring us written documentation of a, some sort of a contract with who's going to be responsible for repairing these vehicles, okay? Okay, that's something that she had spoken to me about that's not I'm required. I'm not sure that's required in the law. I'm not sure where that's coming from. He, well, it, it, he basically has to have a bond so that right. if somebody goes against him and claims uh, that. that, he has a bond for that. But you, and he has to be able to cause the vehicles to be repaired, but there's nothing in the law that says he has to have any kind of contract with the repair shop or demonstrate that kind of He just of needs a bond of, bond of sure. Because because let's say I contract with an individual shop. If they're too busy, I got to find somebody else that can do that work where you get stuck in a contract. I'm waiting until that guy is well, able. I, I will look into that because that's what I read. And that's was my understanding. But, you know, I'll, I'll okay. check. We'll get clarification on that. Yeah. For you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. Hey, it's 615. To to Formally. So okay. what do we do with the existing fees I've already paid to insurance and to you guys? There's quite an expense again? already here. I will. I would extend it forward. Sure. If you meet all those conditions, you're going to. So, of course. so the next time yeah. they're saying if you don't, when you if you reapply, there will be no application. Well, I've already paid insurance fees for last year for a license I was not allowed to legally use, and I've already paid for this year's. <laughs> so that's what she had spoken to me about was bring those receipts. Um, so should we just instead of resending it, just put on old kind of mentality? I think well, we for should the, for the bond, you just repurchase the bond, and that's good for a year. So as long that as is you good get from, this, yeah, right. yeah, since so our that's last good meeting, next year. So yeah. you're good with that. Um, yeah. But if we're resending a license, then that makes those no longer valid by law. I, 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 then now that creates a problem think, for me for reapplying for the license right. now because now I, I'm not going to find an insurance company. That's, ki that's kind of excessive. Well, I, 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 I understand that, but if what she's saying, we have no choice. We either do one or the other, then we have no choice but to rescind it. That's true. We just can't make wait and make a decision for a well, couple right. more weeks? Well, you can, but he, has a, he, can, he continues to have a... A, a license he can't use. So it, that's entirely, I mean, you can do that, but it, it's invalid to him. So It is invalid, but if we cancel the license and I try to reapply, I'm not going to find an insurance company that'll take me. Yeah, I mean, to me, what's another two or three weeks? Yeah. If you're not, I mean, it's up to you. But I'd rather keep it where it's at. Let's why get this. Would you, it's why would you, anyways, but I don't want why would you work time. Yeah. do Let's the paperwork? Let's not make more complications. Yeah. Well, I, this has been complicated, and yeah. what you told us, Diana, That's is right. we have a choice. That's right. We either well, give it I'm, to them or rescind mm -hmm. it. Those are choices. That's true. That's I what believe, you said. I so now we have to make the decision. Right. I still well, believe that to be the case because they I, can't. I would rather take it under advisement. You can't for, leave a license out there that is on the face not legal, it seems. That, okay. That's my, you know, of course, you can but do. But it's his choice to have a license opinion. he can't use. Well, she's saying that, you know, we're, we're you know. I'd rather just table it. I, I just think it's terrible to have him do the paperwork with the state all over again. If we rescind it, he's got to restate, he's got to go through all the paperwork. Not only that, I will not be able to find an insurance company to reinsure us because they're going to be questioning, as is, they're questioning what the town has already done already. And the state has already questioned what the town has done. I, I'm going off of that. You told me that you couldn't, you know, use it. I can't license, use and it. And it isn't correct. valid. I can't it use it. It isn't valid. So but at the same point, let's gives. not complicate <laughs> the insurance side of this. I know. Need to do it the right I know. Way. I, well, then I, I will abstain because I feel that's a terrible burden. But, well, I, I could imagine we could get um, council's opinion on that tomorrow. Uh, it doesn't have to be done this second, correct? Well, you're, you're not voting again until 
<laughs> to meet when, again. So it when, when becomes a moot again. point if you covered all your other bases. I think the planning board, planning isn't board. the planning board meeting on the 10th? I'm sure they have very Is there time apologetic. to get in there? I know they no. do. Well, I mean, I would talk to John Waite and see if you can squeeze in. Okay. To wait till January is, is not fair either. Nope. I have until the 10th. Is our next one, but that's it's a pretty full schedule. I think that we have Dollar General and uh, a solar thing, but well, I mean, how long okay. do you think it might take? Our, I believe our next like meeting is December 12th, right? And so, if you have, I don't know, I mean, you, I, I don't want to promise other boards. I mean, Kip is on the planning board, he says this as a full. Well, that's why I, was I don't asking, know Kip, if they, how long do you think if they can make a decision like on the 10th. You, you, the best thing to do is just fill out the application and you can try to contact John Waite. And, you know. So I'd have to fill out a whole new application for review then? Okay. They've already done a site plan review initially, yep. so. Okay, I just it, want to know what we need to do. A lot <laughs> of the information would be the same information. Yeah, what you it need will be, but I, I can. I can tell you that, you know, more than likely stormwater is going to be part of that. And so without, if you don't have that, it will be put off to our next meeting. Uh, discussing with my lawyer, um, that would not be legally binding because all that surface there is all man-made surface, so it would not be required by law on that property regardless of what surface we have, whether it's asphalt or currently a pervious material. So we know that won't be an issue by law. We're, we're not well, the planning board. No, so I know that, but I'm just saying that, that, that would be an easy it's thing It's a bylaw that I personally do. don't like, but yeah, I hear unfortunately, you. <laughs> I hear it's, you. Uh, it's one that we have to deal with. So. Yeah. Your recommendation is to just leave the law. I don't know what you mean. I didn't know this was going to be on until I got back. Yeah. How could be? That's what I What do you want to do, Trevor? Oh, man. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I think it's things are pretty stable right now the way they are. I, I just think if he goes and get, tries to get on the board on the 10th and comes back, he's obviously not selling anything. The license isn't good anyway. So I just hate to cause him all that extra work. But um, and then at the, on the on the on our we're meeting on the 10th or the 12th. 12th. We meet on the 12th. If he hasn't got his stuff by then, then we rescind it. It's up, it's up for renewal anyway. We renew them at the first of the year, so yeah. we're getting so into we next are. year's yeah. license right. anyway. So just let it wait till the end of the day. Let's wait okay. All right. I don't want to cut you more work. Great. All right. Very good. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Um, Priscilla will be here tomorrow if you want to fill out an application and get it in. Okay. But I know their agendas are filling up. We have a lot of big projects before them. Okay. We'll do that. Thanks, okay. guys. Thank you. Okay. Um, past 7, I have 6.15. Um, John, the Board of Assessors are here. Should I to come up? Hi. Could you just introduce yourselves for the public who doesn't already know who you are? <laughs> sure. Charles Shattuck, uh, board member. Of? I'm board sorry. of? Uh, board of Assessors. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. That's right. John Kadir, chairman of the Board of Assessors. Welcome, John. <sighs> Welcome, Chuck. Thank you for coming out, both of you. Okay, I guess we're here to discuss a tax rate. Mm -hmm. Good news. We're proposing a tax rate, a single tax rate, I might Thank you. add. However, that's up to you folks, uh, of $15.91, which is four cents less than last year. Dare I ask what the valuations? Could I ask you what happened with the valuations? The valuation went up. Um, we had we had significant personal property. Uh, increases with the solar mm -hmm. coming online, um, but the valuation was up 
Uh, and of course, you had to ask me that. <laughs> um, Sorry. I guess I can use the time while you're going through that, John, just to make my annual statement that I believe a single tax rate is to the benefit of the whole town. Uh, a split tax rate, in my mind, is only used for trying to, um, if a single large employer was trying to leave town and you wanted to nail them, it's not really appropriate for um, us in, the, in this circumstance and that I support a single tax rate. Well, and also while you're looking up, I'm just going to read the legal ad, um, Town of Deerfield Tax Classification Hearing. The uh, Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on November 28, 2018 at 6.15 p.m. in the town offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on the issue of allocating the local uh, property tax levy among five uh, property classes for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2019. This tax classification hearing will be held for the purpose of providing an open forum for the discussion of local property tax policy and whether all five class, classes of property, residential, open space, commercial, industrial, personal, shall be taxed at the same rate or at different rates. Information and data concerning the fiscal effect uh, of the available alternatives is open to public inspection in the Office of the Board of Assessors in the town offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Interested taxpayers may review the material uh, and attend the hearing. Written or oral statements from interested taxpayers will be accepted and taken into consideration at the hearing. Written statements will also be accepted prior to the hearing. Okay, I've got your I've got your answer for the valuation. <laughs> okay. We are up twelve million nine hundred and twenty one thousand eight hundred and fifty seven dollars. Okay. Last year we had a total of six hundred and eighty one thousand nine hundred and forty two six sixty two. And this year we have 715,683,040. Um, what else would you like to know? We could, I guess I have to tell you that we could do a split, although we do not recommend it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it would involve huge complications on top of the split itself, but you could go, um, did you get the number you were looking for? That's yep. what, yeah, okay, thank you. Yep, um. <laughs> These things are so... <laughs> they don't want to miss any of your gems of wisdom, John. <laughs> you could lower the residential rate to $13.24, and that would increase the industrial commercial to twenty three eighty seven. Just so you know. Again, I would see that as very anti-business. Yeah. And not pr not productive for us in the long run. I I, I, no, I agree. We, that we would not recommend it. But yeah, most all the businesses in our community, you know, uh, pay their fair share of property taxes, and they demand very little services from our community. So in the long run, they really help all our taxpayers. Uh, they ultimately keep our rate down. Right. Right. Because they don't send anybody to school. Any other questions? Um, no, I don't have any. One thing you might on. like to know, um, volunteering this, you didn't ask, but uh, we're only leaving about $3,000 on the table. 
Okay. Thank you for that, John. Yeah. We're, which which is a lot year. different than last year. Last year we left about 73. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Very good. Thank you. Any so, public comment? Anyone from the public? Tim? Sure. Tim Hill, G330 Greenfield Road. Um, this may not be the exact appropriate forum, but could you briefly explain, I, I thought I saw something on maybe a town website that re-evaluation re of properties is going to be taking place. Is that something that happens a specified period of time? Does it involve home visits? What is the resident's right in terms of letting people into their house and so forth? Just a question. Yeah, re-evaluation takes place cyclically um, we have an interim revaluation every three years it does not include visiting every single property um, it is a uh, uh, based upon looking at sales determining what sales ratios are that kind of thing we do look at a lot of properties uh, in any any building permits, uh, our our uh, revaluation company goes out and looks at and determines, you know, if there's an increase in value in the property. Right. Okay. Okay. Hopefully Thank that's sufficient. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Is there any other comments, questions? Someone like to make a motion to approve? I make a motion that we um, close the hearing. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion that we approve the tax single tax rate of fifteen dollars and ninety one cents. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks Thank for all you your hard work. Okay, on we've that. got a few things that we need your signatures on. Okay. Uh, John, just for everyone that's here and in our audience, um, because of the tax hearing tonight, what, do you have an estimate on your timeline for uh, taxes? Yes. I, tax bills? I do have a, I was talking oh. to um, Barbara, right. and she asked me to make a um, use public service announcement that um, in about two weeks. I think oh, in okay. about two weeks, next couple of weeks, bills will be out, and they should be looking for them. Okay. We don't have an exact date, but a couple of weeks. Well, we would hope. You have a lot of work to do ahead of time. Right. Yeah, exactly. So. We would hope to get an approval within a couple of weeks. Correct. How soon we can get tax. She was expecting. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get tax weeks. bills out in the next, in the next, in the next year. We don't have a particular day yes. in mind. It's not yeah. under our control completely. So. Correct. Um, yeah, I think you need a date on it, though. Thank you, Trevor. You're welcome. We, we always Sorry get phone that. calls. Yeah. I know, yeah. And we want people to be looking for them, but um, they still have a little bit of work to do ahead of time. Is it 28? Yeah. Thank you. We need their signature on anything else here? I do I think that's the only one, right? Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the only the only paper we need a signature on. Okay. What's that? We'll do the electronic right afterwards. Yeah, oh. we'll take care of that. Yep. yep. The electronic. We'll take care of it. Yeah, that's we'll right. do that. Yeah. Yep. Are, uh, were we supposed to do something to do that password? Well, we, we can do it for you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Once you sign, you actually sign the paperwork, we'll sign electronically. Okay, thank you. All right, Appreciate thank it. you very okay. much. Thank, thank, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Bye. Appreciate all your hard work. Okay. Our next appearance is uh, Mr. Jay Savage, president of John G. Savage Realty. Um,
request for a chapter 61A right of first refusal for Wells Cross Road property. Can I come up, Jay? Come on sure. up, Jay. <laughs> Hi, Jay. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Good, Good to see you. Good to see you all. Um, yeah. Just trying to get the 61A released on a piece of property that I'm looking to sell. We don't need a new ball field or a place to build something. Good. Good. Thank you. You've read so, through all the materials. There's substantial okay. materials in your there plan. There is. Yeah. I had looked through them earlier. And, uh, you want to describe where the property is just for the people? Corner of Wells Cross Road and um, Mill Village Road. So it was a 10 acre section of land that um, some of it we farm, some of it's pasture, um, and another small field, the barn. Yeah. It's part of the um, yeah. original Helen Gripko estate. So um, we're looking to sell that parcel um, in a couple of pieces. So we're looking to remove the 61A and pay the back tax and get it cleared for for, for, for sale. Would it be residential building or would it be something else? I don't know. What, um, or could they be, what would they typically do? It's whatever. It's right. possible. Could be residential, agricultural. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nothing out of the zoning. Right. So I'd like to make a motion. Yep. I'll make a motion that we um, release the 61A or that we refuse. Um, we don't exercise our option. We don't exercise our option for the first. 61A first right of refusal. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Should be all set then, Jay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Did you have the paperwork for us to sign, Jay? Um, I know we had sent a packet of um, information. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. And you have it. <laughs> Just so I'm all set. <laughs> Thank you. That should suffice. If there's an issue, please let me know. And I have to pay the back five years back tax. Yes, yes. Talk to them. With them. <laughs> that 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 okay. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Jay. Good Thank to see you, you Jay. Again. Thanks. Okay, six thirty-five. We have a hexagon, hexagon, hexagon. Excuse me. Energy tax agreement. A review and vote recommendation from the board of assessors. Take off. Yes. Is someone here for that? They were going to be here, but they're they're not, and we told them that it wasn't critical that right. they were here. Um, <coughs> I, I read through this. I'm not. Uh, I don't really have. Well, I'm not really clear on it, and I'm not really don't have an expert opinion on whether this is good for us or not. Well, point, does I someone mean, have an explanation on this? I kind of feel it. Well, we should call the assessors back. Yeah, well, the only yeah. thing I can say is that it, it is a solar field, and uh, the town over the next 20 years will get $542,000. Um, there is no services uh, required from our town except for to cash their checks. So I think that's a. And it still needs deal. town meeting approval, so yeah. you vote and then it, that will. Okay. I, I just. I don't have any rep. I don't have any reference for to be able to. There aren't many. <laughs> I know. So I'm just saying I don't, this, you know, I, if this is good or not. This is basically 40% or 60%, I did the math right, 60% less than what we're getting from the other solar company. But it's only the third, a third the size of the other solar company. So actually I think we did better here. I don't know how you work. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, between the two, between the two, uh, I mean, the town of Deerfield over the next 20 years is going to get, you know, almost $2 million. That's pretty good money. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm certainly not turning down the money, but when you, when you do it in a, over 20 years, yes, it sounds like a lot of money, but for one year, it's only $27,000. Right. But the other one we're getting is 67000 so... Between it's still eight. I mean, if you built one house on that, you'd only probably get six thousand dollars a year. So, but 
That's true. So the assessors are uh, pleased and happy with the, what they've come up with um, for this, um, for this, for what was presented. This is, this is um, they're happy with this. However, there's talk, Hexagon's talking about changing the size of the project, in which case it would have to go before them again. Okay. So we can approve this, and then if they decide to do something different, um, Making then it big, it's gotta, they're thinking they're of gonna go through it. again. They, they're talking about doing a larger unit or a small, I don't know. I stepped away when I mentioned this also has to go to town meetings. Perfect, so. okay. All right. But I, I, Maybe we can get more. I don't know all the details, but I don't see, they can't really make it larger for where it is unless they were planning to do another one at a different location. You know. Okay. Okay. Well, right. that was all. I so just. As long as it's Are they finished with their planning board process? Yes. Okay. If the assessors think this is good, then that's fine. Yes. I just didn't it, have a reference. For the project they presented, yeah. they're comfortable with it. I didn't have it, a reference. But they yeah. did say okay. it, it may change. So. All right. Do you want to uh, wait until 7 o'clock to do our public info session? Oh, we're gonna, do we have a vote on this, the hexagon one? Oh. We have to vote on it, yes. I think. All right. We do. Oh. That was yes, why please I... please uh, look at the note here. <clears throat> so you, you, know, you need to vote, recommend it exclusive okay. of this. Correct. Okay, district. so I make a motion to approve the uh, hexagon energy tax agreement uh, exclusive of the South Deerfield Fire District, South Deerfield Water Supply District. Um, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So. Well, um, we don't, yeah, we have to wait till seven for that. Yep. Is, there, we do. is it, was it a posted here? Or? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it was. Um, we could make, we could approve the minutes. Yep. Um, I think that we should clarify, the only thing on the minutes, I think we should clarify um, uh, the hearing or the appearance for um, Brian Two Feathers. I, how, did, how did you want to do it? Well, it, it, it says that, uh, I said that Mr. Atherton would have to return to the Zoning Board of Appeals to sell van conversions and motorhomes, and I don't believe that's exactly what I said. I just said that he would need to go back to the uh, planning board. Well, Pat actually com uh, composed these uh, minutes watching the, the meeting. Okay. Well, if, if I did, in fact, say that, I misspoke because it shouldn't be the zoning board. It should be the planning boards. And the reference to, you know, selling conversion vans or motor, it was, it's motorized vehicles. We, we had some concerns about having to go back to ZBA, but I think we clarified that Correct. this week that he didn't have he to. He does not so. have to. Correct. Right. Yes. I think we did have concerns about that. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, can we so do you want to add add the planning board or clarify just, it? it could, says no. It. Yeah, it says it. Well, he also said, said he would need to go to the then. planning board. It was correct then. That's it's right. changed since then. That's right. Because we were thinking he had to go to zoning as well. Correct. But then, well, we, then it turns well, out we didn't. No, he, well. I'm not sure so exactly like how I said, but yeah, I, I would just like it to say that it was the planning board is what I meant to say because I, I knew all along, I, that's why I was questioning right from the get-go why he went to the planning board, I mean to the zoning board, uh, because the selling of used vehicles is... It's a planning board issue. Well, no, it, it, it's done by a, uh, it's a matter of right in that area, providing that his facility is under 4,000 square feet, which it was, but he went there to repair the trailers, mm -hmm. and that's what triggered the ZBA thing. Okay. Okay. Can we note it? Other than that, make a motion to approve the minutes of November 7th, 2018. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, a one day special liquor license for a Yankee Candle. Um, um, I make a motion we approve that. I just have to find the dates. Oh, they're not in here? Oh. Oh, okay. The dates are on the agenda. Yeah, they're right. 12 5. Oh, okay. Are those two? Yeah, okay. I make a motion to um, approve the special one day liquor licenses for Yankee um, Candle Village on December 5th and December 6th. For our wreath making event? Yes. I, Second. I only. Uh, question is, did you ever, I mean, how many one-day licenses can we give to one business before, you know, it's like, I, I don't know. 
They, we, they have That's the right. choice. They have the choice of getting a, you know, a one for all of them. Okay. But they don't know how many they're, they're okay. going to need. They all know that. We've told them. So they choose to they're just choosing come ahead. to do it this way. Okay. okay. We've looked into whether we could make it easier for you so we, you don't have to make, take up so much time at a lot of your meetings doing these. But, um, so December 5th is the girls' night out event. Raise the fee, maybe. And the beer yeah. and wine. <laughs> no, I, I, I just didn't maybe. know. I mean, if, what would be the difference of them just getting a, a liquor license and then they wouldn't have to do that? Because they don't. You, yeah. The liquor license would have to be at the premise and they don't, they don't do have a... There. Right. Yeah. yeah so somebody comes Correct. in, sure. apparently. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Town Building Advisory Committee Mission and Membership. Um, Carolyn, you can probably help me out. What? Mission. Char charge. Charge. Mission. <laughs> mission, you want to change that to charge? charge? All right. Yeah. Uh, what are we talking about, mission town buildings? Charge. We're talking about the town? These are the liquor licenses to sign. Okay. Top bottom. Town Buildings Advisory Commission. Mm -hmm. oh. So, do you want to talk about this a little bit? Um, do you have this one? Your package should have this. Yes. One. Yeah. It's a, go ahead. You talk about it. <laughs> You've already talked about it before. Yeah. I gave you a sample a while back. So. And, uh, go ahead. All right. So, um, town building advisory committee. Um, this is the charge. There has been long discussion about best ways to move forward with several anticipated building projects. To proceed proactively, I recommend the select board create the town building. It, buildings Advisory Committee, as, it, um, as opposed to a charge at this time, I recommend the following task. Did we, is this, we're still going on this, right? There's not another uh, charge? But this is a little updated. Okay. The Town Building Advisories Committee was created by the Select Board to, one, oversee a building's needs assessment of town-owned buildings, building on information, and, and I'll just preface that by saying that, um, on Monday's special town meeting, we're talking about adding some money to current fund that we have that the buildings, um, that this committee would oversee doing a, um, an assessment of our town buildings. I don't know how many would get done with that, but that, that was that. Um, so one was oversee the building, building, building needs assessment of town owned buildings. Two, building on information prepared by South County Senior Center Consultant Diane Cornwell develop a space needs plan for the Senior Center. Assess, uh, what was that? Three, that should be three, <laughs> not four. Oh, three, assess uh, opportunities <laughs> for a combined communities Senior Center. Uh, four, <laughs> assess uh, feasibility of reuse of church and grammar school, reference the 2013 grammar school study. Um, Five, assess public-private funding and or development options for community senior center and senior housing. And I can't remember where I'm at. Five or six again now. Okay, prepare a report with recommendations for a select board, including whether to create a permanent building committee or building specific or building spe building specific building committees for potential projects. So town buildings that we're speaking of is the town hall, the senior center, the church, the elementary school, the highway garage, and the library? The old, well, I guess yep. we senior, were, yeah, I can yeah. call it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, senior so center. Decide, and it's, it, it also, that's what they'll be deciding, you know, which among all the town buildings, but those are the primary ones. Yeah. But they'll, 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 they will assess that and come back to you. You that's decide right. what will be done. They'll determine which ones, you know. So you're saying the charges which ones need attention? Well, well actually, let me go back a little. The, the needs assessment is bigger than simply um, uh, the specific projects. Capital planning is very interested in that for capital planning purposes. Even the highway garage in our newest building is going to need, we, we're going to need to know condition and how to, you know, anticipate capital needs that might happen for that building. So it would include all of our municipal building in that assessment for capital planning purposes. And then in terms of building, we know, we've talked about this building and the church building. 
I don't know, I think our highway garage, for one, I mean, it's, it's pretty new, and it was sold to the town as a 50-year building that we're not going to have to do much to, and you know, a lot of it. I agree with that, but you'd still spend time looking at that. I, I think, would I think that would be low on the list, right? right? So when they look at that, we, we, I think we're talking, we have 25,000 for the church. We're hoping the town will allow us to put 30,000 more towards this study, and I think we would start at, you know, certainly the church and the senior center are main, and this building, um, but you're right, I think, I think the town garage would be low on the list, but you're right, for planning the CIPC, they need to get that on their schedule for years out. But how, yep. how long has it been? I mean, we paid a pretty good amount of money to get the senior center rebuilt. I mean, it came in at, what, $1.3 million? We've already had that done. What's that? What? The senior center. Yep. Building. Yeah, we have it. You didn't see it? Oh, you mean the study? Yes. Yeah, we had a study yes. going into what it was going oh, to be. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, I was going to say, we Correct. didn't do we any didn't renovations. Do yeah, no. <laughs> no, you're right. Renovations. You're right. Well, that think, was a very, very basic you know, yeah. overview of the condition of right. the building. And I and, think they would take that and, mm -hmm. and kind of build on that because it really, you know, it's been, it was 2015, so I think. No, it was 13. 13? That's when I was here. Yeah. Oh, my quick. So um, it's be kind of old. Gathering, gathering that. Hey. You're right. Building on all this work that we've already done, compiling it, bringing it to us and saying, Let's start here. But also the idea was to incorporate Diane Cornwall's assessment for space needs. Correct. Because, I mean, you, you need to vision where do we want to go with our seniors. And, and it's really important to have a viable place for our seniors. And so there was discussions of, you know, what really what do we do? What do we do with this right. building? long yeah. run. Do we build a new town offices building that houses a community center, senior center, and this, this comes into senior housing? There's a lot of those kind of discussions that people have ideas out there, but we need to kind of get them rolling in one direction. I think, it, I right. think this idea was That's this committee was going to look at some of this and get this going. Well, the focus. We need to, keep, we need to move on this. And if, if we don't put a group together then, that can focus on this, then we're not going to be able to do anything for town meeting. Oh, I, I think, and I can be way off base, but I, I, I like to see, you know, you look at things uh, maybe not just one at a time, but when you, you put all of, all these buildings, it, it, the project becomes so big and so overwhelming, it ends up like with our sewage treatment plant. You know, we hired a consultant to break down, you know, what's most important and say we went through one through six steps, and but we never really identified which ones we're going to do, it's kind of, now it's going to be, we're going to do all of it. And how are we going to pay for this? Actually, I disagree on that because oh, so. what it does is give us a big picture. Oh. We know we have this giant stuff and we actually prioritize and have a 13 year plan of how we're going to phase through this. And hopefully each phase will, will have the ability to go out and hustle grants or whatever. But we have a game, game plan. And I think that this is what this would do, it would look at the whole big picture because that's the thing, everything, everybody looks at it in isolation. We don't have a big picture. Well, you've got and, the library coming on and we've got right. senior center and we, so how do we prioritize that? And, and how do we, what are we even looking at for expenses? And, and, and what, are we, what are our space needs? No, nobody has really articulated in a public setting what our space needs are gonna be for the next 10 or 20 years. Uh, so I felt it was really important to have David Prickett give us a, an overview of where we we're gonna go with the sewer system. So I kind of feel the same way with this. This is, this is somebody coming in and organizing us and focusing in on a big picture because we all tend to focus on one or two little things and it's not the big picture and it's not a priority list of stuff either. I mean, it would be lovely to, to you know, renovate the church, but is the church going to fulfill our space needs? Mm. And, and, and how does that work with the senior center? You know, I, I know myself, I, well, let's do the church as a community center and let's rehab the senior center at the existing senior center as senior housing. Well, that's just me. I want somebody else to say that that's the correct way to invest our money or not. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not the, what we're supposed to be doing. And so, I mean, I'm not an expert. So I would like to have someone give us some guidance. I'm not saying that I would 
necessarily recommend everything that that person does or go along with it, but I would certainly like to have the opportunity to hear what a professional person would put together for us and at least give us an idea of what our expenses look like. Um, it's, it's, I mean, we've got multi-million dollar expenses. I, I just, well, we were, I you need to have somebody prioritize some of that stuff. I think we were hearing this from different boards, CIPC, other members on finance. They were really kind of like, well, how, where's, where are we going in town? We got to get a full big picture. And, and I think the idea was to put this committee together to kind of narrow that down a little bit and give us some, some ideas on where we go, where we go. And from that was here. the purpose of having a, an assessment of the buildings. How much, how much are we going to have to put in the buildings be, to meet our needs down the road? Or do we take them down and put are something we, new? Or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It's a big, it's a big topic. Yeah, but and. and <laughs> Well, that's why I was suggesting that we, we narrow it. I mean, in, in, like the highway garage is one thing. You know, right. Why spend any time on that? We, we may not. not. And that's, well, I, you're right. I, I have to I say, that, just, that may be more Capital Planning capital is very planning. interested in this and very supportive. They jumped up in town when I mentioned that we we're thinking of doing this because they would like to know the needs of all the buildings that we're taking care of. What do we have to replace at the highway garage right. in 10 years? And in 15 years, that's the kind of stuff that we want to we'll plug in. If, so it if it's nothing, it should be nothing. That part's probably quick. Right. Yeah. Okay. That, that part's quick, I think. I think, but it would, and, and, and part of this does fall on And it's advisory, it comes back board. to you. It comes back to you before yeah, they also move does on Yeah, also does it. And then we can have a public, dis it gives us a basis for a public discussion. To get people, find people folks need in to the audience have, to come and tell us what they think. Yeah. Or call us up and complain about what, we, what they think. But <laughs> it's, okay. it's, it's the idea is to give, have some basis of conversation, commonality of where to start, and, and to have it sort of organized. Because we, we, we can't organize this in like two-week cycles. I get part of your point, Kip, too, is like that. You, know, you look at just the, the highway garage. And, and part of that task it really is the Capital Improvement Planning Committee's job to kind of figure out what's the long-term plan for that building in 50 years, do you have to replace it? What's that, you know, kind of just get this stuff on a schedule. But then uh, we're really like kind of focusing on the main. 50 uh, years at my point, buildings. 50 years goes by pretty darn fast. We better not I have not. to replace that. I hope you not. and I are never gonna let <laughs> I, I guess, I think I'll be here. what I'm looking at here is like, now let's take the, the old grammar school, the senior, yes, current senior, senior center. Yep. I've read that report, uh, it was a couple of years ago, it was going to be well in ex exceed, I think, $1.3 million. Yep. I've personally looked at the building, um, it's what I've done for the last 45 years. Yep. Um, it, it's, it's, I don't see it's worth spending five minutes dealing with that building. You, you think know, it's worth just it's either, taking down? or? Well, it's either, the, the only choice is, do you want to spend that kind of money and renovate it? to bring it back to life or tear it down and build a new one. And that's what right. they could do. That's I the think, only question. Right. Don't, don't spend any, don't go looking at the thing. I mean, if you want to know what the, the structure of the roof is, look at that report. Yep. If you want to know I think how that's many what bats live in there, yeah. ask them, you know. <laughs> there's I mean, quite a that, few. That's the kind of thing. And so I, there is a big need for that. Yeah. In, in, in that community right now, the people that use that building have a real strong affinity for it and they'd sure. love to see it redone. But you're right, you, it may turn out where you lay the facts out to the town and the seniors right. come and say that and they're going, well, I don't want to spend that for that. Let's try and look at something else. Or they may say, you know what, it's worth that to us yeah. to do it. So okay. hopefully this, this body will do that. Okay. Yeah, I just want to so note, you've already appointed four people and I can say their names if, if you don't yep. remember. And um, we've got three applicants and I'm recommending you pick one of those to serve. And I have a recommendation as well about that. Okay. okay. Can I so, chime in on this? Uh, sure. Of course. The, uh, the Finance Committee did take a look at this, and we approved the addition of the $30,000 to make a total of fifty-five. We didn't spend a lot of time debating uh, exactly how it was going to be used, but I think it's safe to say that the motion says an assessment of town buildings. So that's what we were looking for, and that's what we basically agreed the 30,000 along with the, the 25 was to take an assessment of the town's buildings 
Tell us what's right with them. Tell us what's wrong with them. Not necessarily to tell us what we should do with the buildings. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, what... Th that's not why we're going to hire an, an engineer or an architect. No, that but goes to the committee. we do need to know, I know what the condition of the building. See, we, you're right. We have a report over here. If we hire an engineer, we hire an architect, let him take a good look at it. Let him take a look at the report. If he sees anything in the report that he doesn't agree with, let him say so or her. Mm -hmm. But it's really an assessment of the existing buildings. You're right. Highway garage is what, five, six years old? The elementary school is 25 years old. Uh, give or take, I would assume it's got at least 25 to, to 50 years of life left in it, I would hope. But ask the schools, ask to have the architect talk with the school administration. What is it? Are there needs in here that, that we should address over the next several years? I would hope it wouldn't cost more than the 55000 to do this study. If they're going to do a study that tells us what they're going to use all the buildings for, then I, maybe I would right. have a problem with that. I agree. No, I don't, I agree I don't okay. think so. It's the idea is to give us some kind of conditions. The, the last piece that I had on there is at some point in time, and I don't know who the members of the, oh, the okay. building study committee or whatever it's called, but since the church is a major portion of it, the South Deerfield Congregational Church, I had asked that uh, at least one member of that committee be a, f a member or former member of the South Deerfield Congregational Church. I don't know whether that's occurred or not, but I'll throw it out to you. Um, I believe not. We haven't gone build, to building anyways. No. It's over off, yeah. Okay. Um, so, so we have. want to make a motion to appoint somebody? Or approve the charge. Oh, approve oh, the charge, approve yeah. the charge, yeah. Gotcha. So first. I make a motion to approve the charge. Second. <coughs> Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, we already have four members. Do you have one that uh, you'd we, like to recommend? I think we have th yes. three applications and one that we would like to right. make a motion I'm, on. I'd like to recommend is um, Deborah Dacious. Dacious. Sorry, Dacious. Dacious. She was already appointed when you, we did this about a year and a half ago. Okay. Um, and she's still interested. You have in your packet she has her immense information. Amount of experience. She's yes. done a lot of public building and planning projects, uh, community development, and um, I think she would bring a lot to the committee. And I that's why you that. appointed her before. True. So. Okay, great. <clears throat> I make a motion to appoint Debbie, um, Deborah Dacious to the committee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, fiscal year 2020 classification compensation plan. got in your packet the recommendation from the personnel board um, um, you know you what it is already. seven o'clock we could you want to wait yeah yeah we could wait on that Kip I uh, okay. there seems to be quite a good turnout for this that's wonderful what's that yes it was um, it was this, it looked like this. And then on the back is the schedule. And I'm struck. Yes? Yes. Yeah, let's, we'll do that. And then we'll move, we'll move back to the other. Oh, these are done. Thank you everyone for coming. This is an, a really important for us to be able to get funding we have to have a public hearing session. So thank you all for turning out so that we can qualify for funding. Yes, I'm really interested, but the bottom line is money still. <laughs> Such a loud projection. 
<clears throat> okay. Oh, I usually only sing into the microphone, I realized. <laughs> okay, so um, again, my name is Diana Schindler, and I'm uh, the Special Projects Coordinator in Deerfield. And one of the projects that I have been working on is the South Deerfield uh, Center promotion project, along with um, the complete streets component of that. And we've also, I've also participated in some of the walkability uh, work that we did uh, in the fall. So we're gonna talk a little bit about all of those things tonight. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is start with the, the complete streets work. Um, and I'm gonna introduce our, our engineer from Tie and Bond, Vinod, um, please come up and we'll get that going. So um, I'll let Vinod talk a little bit about what Complete Streets is, but basically the town um, has put in a, uh, an intent to do a policy. And so as Carolyn mentioned, the town has to adopt a policy by, uh, we've committed to do it by May of 2019. And during that process, we want to get feedback from you on the policy. We have draft, I have a draft of it tonight and I'll hand it out. Um, so basically, uh, in order to get funding for construction from DOT, which we are, would be eligible for, um, you know, the policy has to kind of hit some targets um, and we're scored on those targets. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna have Vinod go through, um, you know, some of the policy issues um, so the board can also see that. Okay. Again, thank you all for coming. It's a night out, but we, um, I really appreciate you all taking time to come. Yeah, I'll stand here now. Do you want me to do that? Okay, okay. Could you say that? Oh, thank you. Is a black Ford out front with its lights on? Just in case. I have a blackboard. <laughs> Maybe you'll get there on the new one. Is there a pickup? Yeah. It's like right behind the yeah. mighty yeah. dust pile. Oh, there might be a go. Maybe it's still running. Oh, man. Awful to go back it's out like tonight with a dead. dead <laughs> in case you got to run. <laughs> Keep warm. Oh, true. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. So I have some of the, um, the South Deerfield Center promotion report here. Um, the main recommendation is really to do the complete streets work. So um, I have copies of that here. And then later we're going to talk about the mass and motion walkability assessment, which I have copies of too. So. Are those online as well? These will be online after tonight. I'll put them all in one uh, box, you know, around the Complete Street South Deerfield Center space. Let me pass out to the draft policies why I've been well and I'll get started. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Vinod Kalikiri. I'm a transportation engineer, traffic planner uh, with the firm of uh, with the firm of Tie and Bond. Uh, is it on? Yep, it's on. Yep. Oh. You just have to hold it up closer. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a traffic engineer, transportation planner with the firm of Tie and Bond, and as Diana mentioned, uh, we've been assisting the town with putting together the application material. Uh, to go to Mass DOT for construction funding. So I'll go through a little bit of the background on the complete streets and what exactly a complete street is, you know, what, what Mass DOT is looking for uh, when a town applies. I mean, every community in the Commonwealth is eligible to go after this construction funding. Uh, so, but to, to get that funding, there are certain requirements that Mass DOT imposes. The, the, the funds should be used for certain things and they look for a commitment from the town that the funds will be used for those types of improvements. So there is a standard procedure that they have established and, and they, they rate the, the applicant's information as, as Diana mentioned to make sure that all of their goals are being met. Uh, so what I'll do today, uh, I'll give a brief overview of the Complete Streets policy and, and what Complete Streets are. Uh, I'll talk about a little bit about the funding program itself, the Mass DOT funding plan, and, and how much amount is available. Uh, and I guess Dan and I will tag team on talking about the policy itself that, that the town of Deerfield 
uh, has drafted then has put it together and, and uh, in a draft form it's in front of the, the selectmen currently for review and, and approval and then we'll talk about the next steps and where we go from this stage you know once the policy is approved there is there are certain steps that that each community needs to go through to be able to get the funding to do the work uh, so we'll, we'll go through that process so what what is a complete street uh, historically, roadways, you know, most of the streets that, that you see that you drive on have been designed to move cars you know, from point A to point B as quickly as possible. All the metrics, everything that you see within the DOT guidelines, you know, 10 years ago maybe, you would see that it's all tied to automobile travel. You know, how quickly can you get from point A to point B? How much delay? Uh, is, is being caused at intersections and how can you reduce the delays. But it was all about cars. Uh, but given the, the concerns about mobility, all types of mobility, pedestrians, bicyclists, transit, Mass DOT has been changing their policies to be more context sensitive and more responsive to all modes of travel, not just automobile travel. So this is just a pictograph depicting a road that's just focused on automobile travel versus how the same street can be designed to accommodate multiple modes of travel, whether you're talking about a pedestrian, uh, a bicyclist, uh, whether there's transit on the street. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of safety-related components that are built into the concept of complete streets. You may have heard it as context-sensitive design before in other contexts, but these are all newer policies and procedures that DOT has been implementing to help improve mobility by all modes of travel, not just, uh, not just automobiles. So the funding program that DOT has established to, uh, to essentially hand out this, this funding to the communities in the Commonwealth, uh, there are essentially three steps in the process. There's a tier one, tier two, and a tier three process where we are currently, the town of Deerfield is in the tier one stage. So the tier one involves adoption by the town of a policy that essentially demonstrates the town's commitment towards complete streets so that you're looking uh, whenever there is a project or there is an opportunity to implement a complete streets type of an improvement that the town would actually be thinking about complete streets. Uh, tier two, which uh, which is the next step, is actually an application to DOT to request funding to put together a prioritization plan. Just the, the previous conversation, we're talking about the buildings and, and the improvement needs uh, that you have and needing a prioritization plan. That's exactly what this does for the streets. So rather than look at a particular area or a corner or an intersection or a crosswalk or a specific sidewalk, what this plan does, the prioritization plan in tier two, looks at the entire roadway infrastructure within the town, and we generate a list of improvements that the town feels are appropriate for a complete streets project. It can be as simple as a crosswalk, or it could be as significant as a major reconstruction of an intersection. But it's always got to follow certain rules, and it's all about mobility by all, all modes of travel, not just cars. And then the final step, the goal, is to get to tier three, where once the prioritization plan is done, where you list all of the town's priorities for, for projects and improvements, and you put some dollar figures on each of those improvements, and DOT would look at it, and then the town would say, we need funding for the top three projects, or the top four projects. So the funding that's available under tier three is up to $400,000. Is that per community? Per $400,000 per community, that is correct. How, how does the um, state roads fit, fit into this? Five and 10? They do not. 116, Sugarloaf? Not at all. So, at all. yeah, the, this funding can be applied only to town-owned uh, roadways or municipal roads. So if you have a state highway uh, right through the middle of the town, you would not be able to use this funding to improve that. So that, so the intent is, there's already other funding sources, say the chapter 90 and other sources that DOT has for, for state road maintenance and, and other roadways as well in communities. 
Uh, so this is specifically intended for communities that don't have any money left in their Chapter 90, for example, and still want to do uh, pedestrian, bicycle, transit-focused improvements. That's where this funding comes in. So the funding, that the $400,000 per community that's available uh, is intended only for town roads. How, how does um, the state's Green Dot program mesh in with our trying to um, have the standards for us as in the town? So the, the some of those, the green DOT policies, so there's a series of references that Mass DOT recommends that each town review when they come up with their projects. And it says to the extent practicable, you would adopt those policies. So, they so it's not mandated. It's not mandated and they do not, I mean, they do recognize that, you know, if, if you are, uh, let's say, improving a crosswalk at an intersection, you're not automatically required to put in five-foot sidewalks uh, or, or uh, not necessarily Bump sidewalks, but five-foot shoulders, let's say, for bicycles. Because you may not need bicycle lanes at every location. But if it's a state project where they're doing two, three, or four miles of corridor improvements, they'll automatically go in and put in the five-foot shoulders for bicycle travel because that's part of their, the green DOT policy now. Okay. But they do recognize that because of right-of-way concerns and other concerns, they would not force a community to implement all aspects of the green DOT policy. But they do say to the extent practical mm -hmm. or okay. practicable or feasible. Okay. I have a question. Did I misunderstand you or did you say when those funds were avail available to communities uh, if they don't have Chapter 90 money, if the community has Chapter 90 money? No, no wh what I meant was, I mean, Chapter okay. 90 is different from this. What I was... Okay. Uh, what I meant to say was that, you know, if towns that do not want to use their Chapter 90 funds right. for pedestrian-focused improvements or any other improvements, because most communities, it's essentially the monies are so limited that, sure. that most of it goes off to repaving projects right. or, yeah. you know, uh, storm-related storm damages and mm -hmm. things like that. And there's not much left to go towards okay. pedestrian and bicycle improvements. So they've recognized that and they've issued this new funding pool where communities can use the funding to, to do those types of improvements. Okay. So as I mentioned, these projects can be of any size. A lot of communities use it to do uh, simple things as, as wheelchair ramps. Uh, the city of Fitchburg, for example, we are working with them on a complete streets funding project. They are reconstructing 58 wheelchair ramps. Uh, right through downtown Fitchburg. So it could be as simple as fixing wheelchair ramps, restriping crosswalks, or putting up signage at crosswalks that tell drivers that there's, there's actually a pedestrian crosswalk at a certain location. So it could be as simple as that. It could be as big as putting up pedestrian signals at an intersection. There are some communities that use this funding to construct roundabouts. So there are all types of projects that can be, uh, that can be implemented with this funding, uh, but there are certain restrictions. So the, the improvements should be focused on walking, biking, transit, and to some degree, I guess if it's a safety improvement, you could also enhance intersection traffic control, which is, which is a motor vehicle oriented improvement. So again, when, when we apply for funding for certain projects to Mass DOT. They look at these types of criteria and see how those improvements can improve or address those types of concerns, whether it's safety, whether we're improving bicycle facilities, pedestrian facilities, which are essentially sidewalks, crosswalks, and wheelchair ramps, or transit. There are certain projects that are not eligible for this funding. So if it's a regular road maintenance or road repair project, which is usually the Chapter 90 funding is used for those types of projects, those are not eligible for complete streets funding. If there is a roadway that does not have bicycle or pedestrian facilities and they're prohibited on that street, you would not be able to use the funding on such streets. Uh, drainage, landscape in improvements for projects, you would not be able to use it for that. Lighting, for example, a lot of communities ask if, if they could use the $400,000 towards lighting improvements. And TOT says that if it's lighting related to pedestrian safety, 
You could use it, but it's not for streetscape design type of lighting improvements. And the, the funding cannot be used on state highways. So at this point, I uh, want to point out that there is a, a draft policy that's, that's available. Uh, I know the selectmen have it, as well as their copies uh, that Diane is handing out. So the intent, the first tier, if you recall, one of the slides I mentioned, there are different three tiers of uh, process that we need to go through to secure the funding. The first step involves uh, the town adopting a policy where you would make a commitment towards complete streets, and that's, that's what the draft is. Uh, you can score up to a total of 100 points. That's what DOT does. They go through it line by line, and they see how the policy is worded, and then they assign points, and you need to have a minimum of uh, 80 points to, to be able to, uh, for, for them to approve the policy. And uh, the policy that Diana is uh, handing out, I believe, we did, uh, using mass DOT criteria, we, we scored that policy, and I believe it's, it, it has secured more than 90 points at this point. I just have to add, um, some of your faces have come to other complete streets meetings, or not we, downtown meetings, and I, I just want to say that Charlie Baker was just reelected, so this program is not going to be changed, at least through his term. So we should be able to, if we do this now and we start this process, we'll go through the whole process and be able to get money at the end without having to stop and go back and start over again. Because what happened before is we had downtown charrettes, we had um, complete streets policy we adopted, and everything changed when Deval Patrick left office and Charlie started over again. They dismantled the program. So I know we started this multiple times, um, but this time we're going to go forward. <laughs> Yay. Right. So I, I just want to say something to that effect. Um, so this policy was, as Carolyn said, in 2013, the town actually, the town of Deerfield was actually ahead of the curve and worked on a complete streets policy. Um, then uh, subsequently, as Carolyn mentioned, a few years later, uh, Massachusetts actually came out with a funding program based on the national uh, complete streets initiative. So now the scoring um, is relevant to that program. So the, uh, the policy draft started with the 2013 version, but much of what has been inserted in it is necessary to meet those thresholds for the scoring in order to get the money for the construction fund. So. Uh, may I ask a question? Sure. sure. You used this word earlier when Carolyn asked you about um, Green Dot, and I see it used in the draft, and the word is feasible. We're feasible. Now, feasible is a subjective term because it may be completely financially feasible on the part of a developer or the town, but it may be considered not, um, not the right balance. But who decides whether something is feasible? And that's my question. I find feasible to be a really subjective term and depends who's sitting in what chairs and, and who's paying the piper. So can you tell me what feasible means, please? So in, in this context, uh, I would say that feasible is where you have adequate right-of-way, that the funding is available, and the improvement makes sense. Like, for example, you may have right-of-way to build two sidewalks, you know, one on each side of the road, and two shoulders, five feet each, one on each side of the road for bicycle travel. But if it is, if that cross-section of that roadway, if that roadway is running through uh, a very less dense area and it's, it's all woods and not a lot of uh, uh, development in that area, you may not need, for example, sidewalks on both sides of the street. Just because it's feasible does not mean it's, it's practical or appropriate. So there, there, are, there are other words within that policy that, that you would apply. Because feasible, my understanding of the definition of feasible is something that can be done. Is it feasible? Can I do it? Yes, you can. But practical, the other word you use, and who does it benefit, 
these are all really the questions that come into play mm -hmm. when we were here talking with MassDOT just a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they were having the sidewalk go up Route 5 and then jump over across Route 5 so that people were going to have to be um, crossing the road and then continue the sidewalk. Well, yeah, that was feasible. Was it practical? Why, why was that done? So I'm not asking you in a way to answer it so much as to say that I see a real challenge about the implementation by um, using words like this. Yep. Good point. One thing I can mention, though, is that DOT is required, it's, it's mandated that they follow the green DOT policy to the letter. So they would do, they would look at it a hundred different ways to make sure that, that every element of the policy, the green DOT policy is applicable because if you did not do that, the procedures that you need to go through, there's a waiver procedure, mass DOT, and I'm talking about this in the context of the TIP project that you're referring to. Right. Right. When mass DOT is funding a larger corridor improvement and it's on a state road or, or a state funded project of, of a significance, they require that every element of the green DOT policy be applied, or you have to go through a very complicated waiver process where mass DOT at a very senior level would review your waiver request and say it's okay to not build sidewalk on both sides of the street. But they rarely get to that point. They actually end up calling for all these improvements throughout the corridor just to make sure that they do not have to go for exceptions or design waivers. But what we are talking about here is something entirely different. This is context sensitive. These are local streets. If you're looking at, at the town common, there are certain things that you need in the town common. There are certain things you may not need in the town common. And, and this policy would not force things that are not necessary on the I, town. I just want to add that my understanding is with the policy, what we're committing to in the policy is that we're going to look at each project through the lens of complete streets. It, it is up to, I think it will be, uh, you know, public works would be involved in the discussion, the board would be involved in discussion, maybe the public would likely be involved in the discussion, but it doesn't mean we have to implement it. It's just that every time we go to do a project, they would like us to at least look at it in that context to see if it does make sense, if it is context, uh, you know, if it makes sense in that context and if, if it is feasible. But I don't think we have to do, you know, we, we have to look at it, yeah. but we don't ever have to implement it if it's not feasible, et cetera. I mean, you, we're committing to do it, but I'm just saying it's not, is that true? We have some we don't. That is correct. Right. And also I, I do want to clarify one thing. What comes out of this process, the policy obviously, it, it stays for, you know, it stays with the town, you know, it's, it's part of your, your commitment to complete streets. But what we're talking about, the steps after this adoption of the policy, the $400,000 that's going to be provided in construction funding by Mass DOT, those go to specific projects that the town identifies. So if you, if you pick the town common or a si section of sidewalk or a pedestrian improvement at a crosswalk location, if you identify those improvements in the priority list, in the, in the tier two prioritization plan, and you put a dollar figure on it, say this, this wheelchair ramp is gonna cost you know, $2,500 to construct, and you ask for DOT funding to reconstruct that wheelchair ramp, that's what they'll fund. So, it's, so they're not applying the green DOT policy to all the infrastructure around that wheelchair ramp to see if you're putting in all the side, reconstructing all the sidewalks and if you're putting in uh, bicycle lanes and all of that. So this is kind of a little bit different in terms of what, what you're talking about compared to, to the DOT TIP projects, which are a lot more onerous in terms of uh, the application of the green DOT requirements. Thank you. So the draft policy that's in front of the town Again, Mass DOT scores it on four main categories. There's, there's a vision statement that's built into the, the introduction of the document. Uh, then there, is, there are some sections that deal with the core commitment made by the town towards, towards green DOT policies or, or complete streets policies. Then there's a section within the policy that talks about adopting best practices. So you, but there are a lot of references that Mass DOT provides when you're looking at how to improve a crosswalk or how to slow down speed or how to improve safety. 
So you would be looking at all the best practices and, and apply those best practices to implement those solutions. And then the critical piece for mass DOT is that you have an actual uh, implementation methodology. So you, this is not just sitting on a shelf with, you know, with a price tag, you're actually able to go out and implement it using the funding mechanism that, that they've provided. So the $400,000 that Mass DOT provides, uh, it, they review applications twice a year. Uh, one is during May 1st, and the, the next one is during October 1st of every year. Uh, this is, I believe, the third year of the funding that they've looked at, and every year they extend it because it's so popular with communities that want to implement bicycle and pedestrian improvements. Yes? 400,000 one time, or is this every year, or? So it's, four, it's a one-time payment of $400,000, but once the improvements are implemented, you can again go back for an, an additional $400,000. So there is no limitation in terms of saying, like, you get only one shot. A lot of communities, if, if, once they finish their first round of projects, a lot of times they go back to mass DOT with a second application. I mean, it's been only around for three years, so not a lot of communities have gone back, but I do know of a couple that, that's actually trying to get the second round of funding. So, Vinod, the one section I wanted to point out to the board, so as, as Vinod mentioned, the, the, the policy is scored. Um, it seems like it would be adequate in the scoring to, to get the... Um, you know, to be where we need to be. But the piece that he had, that they had recommended to Einbaud and, and Vinod that hadn't been addressed was the piece about uh, evaluating the program and a list of performance measures. So did you want to just talk a little bit about that sure. and if, how, that, yeah, so how that's meaningful to the policy? Right. When, when you... It's in the, I'm sorry, it's on the last page. It's in the last comment section. A15 is the comment. So when you, when you read through the DOT policy requirements, one of the things, as Diana mentioned, uh, that DOT looks for within a policy document is uh, a methodology for the town to measure the effectiveness of this plan. So by adopting this policy and using these funds that's provided by the DOT, how do you know that it has helped improve bicycle and pedestrian mobility, transit mobility you know, within the community? So they ask for some type of metrics that you can include in the policy that says, for example, once a year you would report on how many uh, wheelchair ramps were fixed in the community or how many feet of sidewalk have been improved or how many lane miles of bicycle lanes have been striped. In. It doesn't, there is no specific criteria on what exactly DOT is looking for relative to the metrics. They just want to see that the town actually has a method to Which monitor is. that the funds are actually being used effectively and that it's actually providing some improvement. So you could be looking at crashes. If there's an intersection that's been deemed unsafe and you use the improvements, uh, the funding to improve that intersection, you can look at the crashes before and after using police department records mm -hmm. and then show that you have actually improved the safety at an intersection. So just having wording in the policy. Right now, there is no wording to that effect in the policy, and that's right. why, I mean, that, having that gives you five additional points within the scoring system. Right. Uh, right now, that isn't in there, and so I had highlighted that as, as something Makes that sense. the mm -hmm. town could consider. Again, you need to have at least one metric in the policy to qualify for those five additional points. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Lisa, you're here. Um, you have been doing a lot with um, walkability, and um, I mean, that was really a focus from our previous um, downtown efforts was to improve walkability and sociability of our downtown. And um, I just want to mention that you also were awarded the Rural, rural um, Health um, Hero Award, which I just want to say it's wonderful give up. to have her here. Very proud of you. Um, so thank you. But because you do um, a lot with walkability, um, would you do you feel like you could come up with um, some kind of way to um, um, see if there was an improvement in walkability of the downtown? Maybe I could speak about the walkability. Please. Yes. 
Yes. Do, do you have yes, please, yeah. for, the t thank for TV you. as well. Just, is it, is it, yes. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Lisa. Oh, thank you, Kim. I, I really appreciate you coming. I didn't realize you were coming. It's so my delight you. to be here. Um, Diana asked me to attend, and um, I did want to just share a little bit. As your town nurse, I also am an employee of the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, and we had an opportunity to access some funding from Mass in Motion, which is administered through the COG. Uh, Beth Giannini, who's a transportation senior planner, and I um, coordinated with the senior center and through the efforts of um, a summer survey that we did on walkability to the community at large to conduct this workshop on September 4th on walkability in the downtown area. It was a workshop talking about contextual improvements to built environments that um, promote pedestrian access. And then we um, used the skills of the trained volunteers who were there, eight community members signed up for it. And um, Diana, Kevin Scarborough, Christina Johnson were also um, participant. Um, we conducted a downtown walking assessment uh, going north, south, east, and west. North Main Street up to um, the high school. Um, Elm Street all the way to the intersection with five and 10. Sugarloaf down to Crestview and um, uh, South Main up a bit as well. We also did a perimeter area of the downtown common. We're aware of the very good work that the town common ad hoc committee's been doing over the course of a number of years to look very closely at the commons needs, but around that perimeter, how did it connect to the downtown area? So there's a brief report. It's four pages in length, and we've submitted it to the town for your use in the um, downtown streets, complete streets work that you're doing. And essentially, it was just a walk and look and identify along that walk where um, are the lanes not clear, where are um, sight lines dangerous, where maybe parked cars are impeding the view of either drivers or the pedestrian. Um, what could be done to improve aesthetics of the place mm -hmm. and um, improve safety overall of the structures, um, sidewalks, curb ramps, etc. Yeah. So this is a pretty detailed list of those four <coughs> directions in the downtown area of things that were observed by us that day as we walked. Um, and there's nothing here that's new, but it's so detailed that it could be used as a springboard to identify actual projects in the downtown area that could be prioritized. So do you think if we um, did this, um, there would be some way that you could measure what was beforehand, especially since you have this report, and then the improvements afterwards with relative ease, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that and I'll speak to another project that this sort of dovetails with just briefly, that this syncs with some work that I'm also funded to do and happy to do as your um, town person in service, um, to look at the age-friendly um, vantage point of the projects that are being undertaken by the town um, to be sure that we're involving community members who will be using and benefiting from those spaces. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely, um, and a before and aft. And, and the wonderful volunteers that stepped forward, I'm sure, could be called upon again, as well as others um, we could increase in that fold. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, uh, then I'm in favor of adding it, just so, to give us a little bit more points. Yeah, based on what, what you just said, one of the, well, a simple metric could be a count of pedestrians during peak times. Yep. So you, you pick a time, weekday evening in the summer or Saturday midday during the summer months. You would count, you know, you, you'd have a benchmark of account before the improvements are done. And after the improvements are done, you know, you do a one hour or a two hour count. You can actually get a sense of how much walkability has improved along that section of improvement that, that's, that's measured by the number of pedestrians that feel safe and comfortable walking that mm -hmm. section. So that, that could Brilliant. be a metric that you would include. You know, you would include pedestrian counts as a metric for before and after performance. So I think we'll add, 
you know, we'll take a little time and, and, and go through a few of those things and add that to obviously to this policy. Yeah. I think. But I think we can do it. Oh yeah. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. There's no, no doubt. It makes sense. So if you want to measure what you what you're right. doing, is it making a but difference I, for and, your and residents? I, and if it will make us more competitive, it's certainly of course. worth it. Absolutely. And D DOT does provide some guidance on, you know, what other, you know, the sample metrics that mm -hmm. can be used. So mm -hmm. maybe Diane and I can look at those and see what makes sense for inclusion in metrics. We'll, we'll incorporate some of that language and bring it back Perfect. for another time. That'd be, that'd be great. And I guess, is there any other questions regarding the complete streets portion Lisa, or anything that you. Lisa um, talked about? I just had one question, and I apologized if you answered the question when I was out. Um, there's, a, there's a cap of $400,000 from the state, is that my understanding? That is correct. <laughs> and is there a requirement that the towns and if so, what is the requirement for the towns to participate financially in the uh, project? So the town, there are, uh, so the money is just like the Chapter 90 funds that, that mm -hmm. you get every year for road maintenance. Yes. It's, it's just an application process. Uh, but the money can only be used for construction. Design. So any design work that needs to happen, whether it's sidewalks, grading, drainage, uh, associated with the, the pedestrian safety improvements would be the responsibility of the town. So the town just, would, just would like fund the improvement that. design, and then you could use the funding from DOT to construct the improvements. So, so another, oh, I'm sorry. Question? I, a few people asked me to come tonight um, Great. to be a new business owner. And Joe, come, come up, come up, have a seat. Introduce yourself. Where you, where you, where your business is? New business. Yes, but please I tell us your business and where you um, are. So I have Cheslet Market. I've been open for six months, but um, having the store there, I've seen a lot of things with the intersections. Yep. The crosswalk, but also it was brought to my attention through the lottery yes. about being ADA compliant on certain yes. things. So I don't. I'm basically wanted to point out to you guys, there's a couple things that they basically said was like the curb cut there for the, inter for the, the crosswalk, crosswalk, but also the grade there mm -hmm. on that side of the street, that sidewalk, the grade is not the right for S to be ADA compliant. Too steep. Right. Yep. So I wanted to just point out that, and they, they also did recommend more um, handicap spaces downtown. Mm -hmm. um, and then the one other thing that I wanted to let you, everybody know is um, there are new people moving into town um, and quite a few people are wheelchair. Yes. And that's, you know, and they're seeing, they've been in and they want to check things out and make sure, you know, of course the store is compliant, but they want to make sure that things are going to happen in town. And basically yes. I said, you know, I would come forward, but. Thank you. Just safetyness too at the intersection because I've, we've already seen numerous people almost get hit there in the crosswalk. Yeah, it's a very dangerous crosswalk. So that's all I wanted to yeah. let you know. And Thank you. Okay. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming right. and that's letting us. We're, that's why we're get here. This done. I'm keeping my eyes. Open. I was also I was kind of hoping that we you know just take a quick listening well, session at some point tonight from people who came and how they what they feel what they'd like to see done and I, I know we're we're going to have other meetings other places where we write all this down and there, there'll be more in depth but you know people take time out of their lives to come here I ask people to come here and tell me what you thought what you know this is your chance to tell us so I just w did want to allow oh, you know absolutely. if we could allow people to just say can, hey can we say a little bit of, I, yeah, I do want to say a little bit about the common because I know there's in. a lot of interest in the common too so this is all part of the integrated plan in order to do um, pathways and walkways on the common, they need to be, they need to terminate into a crosswalk that's accessible as we're talking about. So, so Trevor and I have been talking with Vinod about sort of next steps in this, but, but basically, I mean, I'll let you talk about the common, but we, we are really cognizant that that kind of fits into this whole uh, piece of this as well, so. There's been a chicken and an egg, right? So the crosswalks, the, the, the pathways on the common right now, some of them lead to nowhere and the crosswalks, on the street lead to no path. So, uh, I mean, they were there when this was dirt and buggies and stuff. I mean, this is a long time. So we've kind of built up as we've gone. Um, um, Jane Trujere, um, who passed away a couple weeks back, um, really instituted 
getting going on this town common. She saw multiple signs. Many remember Jane and how she came across with uh, ideas of why does this town look like this? Why did that trash receptacle go here? How come this sign is here? And she did a great job and you know asked these hard questions, which were kind of easy, but they were like, "What's it? What is that sign here for?" So she got, I think, 30 signs removed from the town common, and just it just made it look nicer. And um, so she instituted this ad hoc town common committee, and it was one one of the issues that I was interested in when I became selectmen is to, to start improving our downtown and, and our common is obviously the center of that and the sidewalks and how they go around that and even just this year at the Veterans um, Memorial or Memorial Day, you know, we have elderly veterans are out and across in a walker trying to walk on those really narrow, unstable things and, and, and they're about this wide, not wide enough for a walker and everyone's trying to get around, the trees are in their face and we got those limbed up. but. Um, so we have all these ideas of cleaning this up, but it's been a chicken and an egg. Where, where do those pathways go? And we can't really do that until we know where everything happens around that. So um, working with Vinod and MassDOT, Diana, we're, we're all kind of trying to get all this together in our, our committee. Kate Lawless is now the chair, and we're all putting that together and trying to find out how much money do we need for engineering this year? Because I wanted to get kind of put some money aside so that when we got going and got all those answers, we could start on a conceptual design, which, which we have plenty of. I could show you a roll. From 1997, a woman stopped in the car the other day and gave me a whole roll of like everything that was this done in 97. This is a new process. <laughs> so, but it always stops, and we want to push it forward this time. So to get these, uh, to get these crosswalks done, and, and this money would then Talking with Vinod, you'd have a, a conceptual design, and then you need the real design. And because there's stuff under the ground, there's water, sewer, electrical. There's all this stuff you have to think about when we're doing this. And I thought it was just okay. I just want pathways, like really simple. Let's start there. But it does really tie into everything else. So our goal is to kind of set some money aside this year to be able to move that process along. So when that's done and this funding's available in October, we could maybe have be ready to kind of move on some of that stuff but there's a lot of moving parts anybody that'd love to get involved with that committee and come and talk to us we'd love the the help and advice um and participation so that's kind of where we're at right now and and um so i'm so thankful you guys came to try and and so i really want to hear what what, what your ideas are and what your problems were. come up mac come on up say your name your name is Max Hearthstone. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just want to ask you about like the state road versus the town road. Like, are we excluding Sugarloaf Street, but where all the worst sidewalks are? So or the or question is um, <laughs> the state road versus town road, and and many years ago, 116 bypass wasn't in. So this is a Sugarloaf Street is a state highway, and it comes actually by the town hall here and dies, and then picks up again on the other side and heads up to Conway. So. Um, that's a good question, Max. I don't have the full answer. I do know that any state, any of this complete street program cannot be spent on that. But that doesn't mean that um, MassDOT isn't looking at, at improvements there too. So our, my goal, meeting with Vinod and DOT and anybody else who wants to be involved would be to um, dovetail those two projects together. There's also a question of parking. So Mass, um, the state will not allow on-street parking on a state highway. So all those parking spots around the common, um, in front of um, the dentist office, you know, if they start improving that stuff, those go away. Um, so we have to think, does the town want to take over all of that and the maintenance of all the, everything under the ground and everything on top of it? It's a big expense. Um, or do we leave it with the state and kind of have to deal with, okay, so we lose those parkings, but we have this whole Leary lot that we could engineer and design into, we need to anyways, into some good parking and, and park and access to the back of Elm Street. And the back, so I, I, we've had a meeting with people doing, um, owning those buildings, and they said, you know, if you improve these parking lots, we'll redo the backside of our buildings and we'll make that, res, you know, uh, retail. So, and then maybe make some pathways for people to come from Elm Street to the backside. And, you know, at one point there was a design in those plans to the to BBC when they were going to expand and do kind of a cafe or, you know, a, a pub area. So 
there's a lot of ideas playing around and it does affect it, but I, my idea is to dovetail it because you're right, there is a lot of need. Sugarloaf Street sidewalks are, are horrendous. But the whole thing, went all the way down. Absolutely. And that's why I just was worried when you said, you know, when you said just that one road with a big development, because the sidewalks are so bad all They the are, way. absolutely. Either, on either side. It, yep. it, is scheduled, it is scheduled to be done, Max. But I can't remember exactly. Well, I called the DOT, yeah. and they said it wasn't scheduled. No, they no it was. On record it, that it was scheduled to be done. It's well, I think it's I think it's out to, to twenty twenty four or something like that. I've seen it somewhere. Well, 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 they may address it at the transportation needs hearing. Oh, perfect segue. Do you want me to read this? <laughs> so, uh, real quickly, uh, what are your transportation needs? The FERCOG is updating the regional transportation plan and wants to hear your thoughts on transportation in Franklin County, Tuesday, December eleventh. Uh, oh, there's, there's several. I guess the closest one to us is Wednesday, January 16th in Sunderland Library. And there's also one in Greenfield, January 9th. But, you know, so may, maybe they'll address some of that there. But my, to get to your point is to get Masto DOT involved, too, with our common, because their street comes around, right around park. So how do we dovetail that infrastructure work well, with what they have planned? I, I think it's very important that people go to those listening sessions mm. because those, those listening sessions are the where, how you influence the policy priorities for them. If no one shows up and no one complains, then it will be 2024 or whenever. But if you go and you complain, you'll bump up on somebody's list more. I mean, really, getting state money is 90% showing up. So if you show up and you complain, then you will get money. But so we've been complaining about these sidewalks, especially. Yes, but years. are you complaining to the right people? That's the whole point. You got to you got to go to the you you have to work within the DOT hierarchy to make it. It's a learning process for yes. sure of where you got to. I mean, voice just ask Trevor. He was so frustrated. He was ready to come <laughs> in and do all these things or Kip, and we're going to do this. We're going to do that, and it's like. How many years now? Uh, We've already yeah. been here. We, we <laughs> are, been a year. We, we are trying to, though, I, I'm cognizant of that as well, that this has been going on for 20, 20 some odd years, depending on what <coughs> aspect of it you're talking about. Um, so we are really trying to keep this in a shorter term vision of five years. I'd really like, we, you know, Trevor and I talked about, we'd like to see physical improvements at the 350th anniversary celebration. It seems like a good mark to try to hit. Um, at least with the common and right around the common, once we get our prioritization plan, we'll know more what that, you know, is going to look like. But those certainly seem to be the priorities. And sure. also, this isn't just uh, an infrastructure improvement. It also, <coughs> part of the South Deerfield Center promotion was an economic development plan as well. It's an economic revitalization plan. So you have some key businesses down, downtown in South Deerfield right now that are vacant um, that could be turning over. So, you know, it's an ideal time to really try to put all these things together and get as much momentum going as possible. And we have like Nikki and, and, and <coughs> there are things happening. So we're trying to do this now. And, and like I said, most importantly, from a big picture point of view, Charlie Baker is in office. So the program's not going away <coughs> and it will be funded because that's, he's made that commitment to be funding it. So if we get going and we have finite things that we can achieve, then we're not gonna be able to address everything, but at least we'll see some movement and we'll move faster than we have been. I mean, we get started and we just don't move fast enough before the programming goes away. So the idea is to get something before the program goes away, because who knows when the next governor, what they're going to do. And specifically sidewalks, I just wanted to, you know, I'm not also just going to wait on this only. Um, a priority of mine is to start funding, um, you know, certain sections that we can just, okay, so we can do this many feet a year and let's, you know, get a plan going where we prioritize what, which are most need, most traffic in this priority, prioritization plan and just start moving on that. What does is, what is, um, the highway department need to make that happen? Is it a, a mix of you know, private and highway to kind of get that rolling and you know, talk with Kevin on, on what his needs would be if we were gonna get a plan, like we do with our roads. He has a prioritization plan and still Waterlee Road got done this year, some other roads and South Main and, and well, next we, year will be another one. I mean, there has to be a- restriction on fixing the sidewalks. We can fix the sidewalks. That's what I'm just that saying. Was, I think that's, that's what I'm saying. Oh, it's just state road, we can't fix the sidewalk. 
And that's been 30 years of it's a state road. We can't fix this. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been talking with Kevin. Kevin might hire, like, some part-time. We'll put in the budget to hire some part-time people to mow the cemeteries. So that would free up highway full-time people to maybe work on the sidewalks ourselves because we could do that cheaper than contracting it out kind of thing. So you could actually get more done that way. I mean, that's one of the well, ideas that we're sort of that. thinking about. We're trying to... Complete streets. We're trying to actually do it. And then, Kevin, come on come up. On, Kevin, we're talking about... Man of the hour. Kevin. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to hide in the back, but it's not working. Out <laughs> All right. Um, super long story short, we'll talk about Sugarloaf Street Road briefly. Um, if anybody's noticed, last year the state did have a bunch of people in. They, they were um, surveying the sidewalks. They were surveying all the areas. For 2022 FY, and right now we're in FY19, they have committed to fixing the ADA um, crossings at all of the roadways. Actually, let me back up a little further. Four years ago, when I was over at District 2, we were having a conversation about sidewalks. And I said, well, these sidewalks belong to you. They're like, well, no, they don't. I was like, so my question to you is, is the granite curb is your layout, correct? Yes, that is correct. I said, well, your granite layout goes deep into each of our roads, which encompasses the sidewalks. So now these sidewalks are now yours. And they went, oh. <laughs> so that in turn, again, a little bit of pressure. And again, I would love to be able to have a super number to be able to call in Boston for everybody in town to call 50 times a day. I would absolutely love it. But just keep in the back of your mind, it's $165 a foot. 4,000 feet, that's $660,000 of sidewalk. 600, that's $660,000. I can pave an awful lot of roads for $660,000. I look, I look at traffic counts as part of where we do our paving because the places that have the higher traffic counts, the ones that have the, 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 the more abuse, or, or I should say, Where it is. that they need the repair the most, are the ones that are getting the most care in the beginning. Obviously, as part of the program, we also look at some of the other ones that have some cracks in them, and the ones that have the cracks, then we'll go ahead and we'll crack fill those. And that, in turn, will, will gain me another two or three years. And then we may end up having to do maybe an overlay on it, or maybe something different. I, what I try and do is, I, is we only get so much money for Chapter 90. And the Chapter 90 money I have, I try and, I'm cheap because I'm, I'm a taxpayer too. And I try and spread our money as far as I possibly can. I mean, when we go ahead, granted, everything put, is put out to bid. But you can also kind of beat up on the people a little bit. Like, for instance, uh, we saved almost $8,000 in milling because we went ahead and beat them up on a couple different areas. Um, it's a little bit here, a little bit there. Does it make a difference? As far as I'm concerned, it does. Um, and that's why we were able to do some of the other millings that we did. The idea of the milling is to go ahead and take the bad stuff out before you put good stuff on top of it. If you go ahead and put good stuff on top of bad stuff, well, the good stuff's only going to be good for four years instead of eight years. So you spend a little bit more money, be penny wise and dollar, don't be penny wise and dollar foolish. You look at the entire picture, say, okay, if I spend arbitrary numbers, if I spend $100,000 here on this road, I can get 10 years out of it. Well, you know what? If I spend $80,000, I can only get three years out of it, four years out of it. Which direction would I be going in? I'd be looking at the $100,000. Spend, spend your money wisely is the way I look at it. So back to your thing with the sidewalks. Besides Sugarloaf Street, I would love to be, absolutely love to be able to go ahead and take care of the exteriors. North Main, South Main, um, Elm. Elm Street. But some of the problems when, when, when we actually look at this is we need to look at how are we going to incorporate everybody? How are we going to incorporate all of the people, the, 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 the uh, owners of the businesses? Very fine example would be if you want to go ahead and take a sidewalk from 5 and 10 and bring it all the way over to, to Jerry's Place, where Jerry's Place used to be, that's all fine and well. Five foot wide, ADA compliant, whole nine yards, no big deal. That's gonna look kind of weird because now all of a sudden you're looking at where the bakery used to be. Okay, now that's another 37 and a half feet of distance between the sidewalk and then the building. What are you gonna do with that? That doesn't belong to the town. Do we, how do we get them to buy in? Is it possible to get this to be buyed in, bought into it? I don't know how all those things come into play. But when you look at it, you've got to look at the very big picture. 
You know, again, with this here, you, you look at all the things you want to do, but on Elm Street, do you want all the telephone poles to go away? Do you want all the wires to go away? Okay, well, now you're going to pony up uh, $100 million. Or do you want to just go ahead and put in some street lights, some nice street lights that maybe you can go ahead and put some decorations on during the festival seasons? These are decisions you have to make. And, the, and some, again, going back to decisions, if you're going with concrete, concrete's very expensive. Concrete's going to last longer. It's a good investment. But, again, you're not going to be able to get the distance you want out of concrete for your dollar amount. You know, and then do you want a, a monolithic curb or do you want a granite curb? You do that right now, now you're talking probably a $4,000 difference for every 100 feet. So there's a lot of things that really need to come into play and, and this is where all of this comes in is you have to look at the big picture and then that way you can pull it all together and say this is the direction we'd like to go in. So. Thank you. Anybody else? So the, so the goal is to start, start putting some some funds together to obviously to get some of this planning done and then and then start implement implementation and, and also work on sidewalks that aren't attached to this it's, a, it's very important to me I hear it a lot and that's um, it's, it's you know definitely a priority for us to get moving on oh we have more questions all right sure she, and then there's one in the back okay. yep. I have a question about who's responsible for um, shoveling the sidewalks. People who own the property. So even on the on Sugarloaf, mm -hmm. even though the state owns the. I believe it's everybody in the state. And so when we put in new sidewalks, that's that's like what we're talking about. The what has to be permit has to be a compensation. State will they, well, state will not mandate or to me, state will not man, maintain sidewalks for plowing. Yes. Presently, right now, the town does the sidewalks in town with the machine after all of the other roadways have been opened up. Granted, it's the last thing that's been done, but once again, I look at traffic count. Where are most of my people going to be? They're going to be on the roads. That's what my concern has to be right off the bat, mm -hmm. public safety. But they do, the town does do it. Question in the back? Uh, this isn't a question, but it's kind of, um, I wonder if this is on anybody's radar about the town common. Um, I'm a newcomer. I just bought a house on, on Grave Street. Welcome. And um, my name is Mark Hart. And um, it became very clear that when you come to the stop sign at Grave Street and you try to turn left onto Sugarloaf, <laughs> there's this long expanse of pavement. You could have a football field. Cars at you from every direction. Yes. And Very so dangerous. I'm, I'm hoping that that's also being looked at in terms of the town common. Could there be a different traffic route or something? Somebody so wants a rotary. Yeah, around and that's in our. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Kate, why don't you come up as well? Because you've been a big part of this study of the common and all of that. You're welcome. Um, Do you want to say a few words? Or? Sure. Um, hi. <laughs> We're very concerned about that little area. Why yeah. don't you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Kate Lawless, and I'm the new chair of the Ad Hoc Town Common Committee. Uh, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm only in town for a little over a year myself, and Jane Treger hooked me onto that committee, so I'm very happy <laughs> to be part of it. Um, and I live on Sugarloaf, so I'm very yeah. aware of all of these issues that we're talking about. So um, yeah, that little area is very tricky very and, dangerous. Uh, it's pretty dangerous we've we've really looked at different stripings over the years I mean that's been a t I can say when we've done these charrettes we've done these public meetings that has always been a priority is that area of how to fix that and so it's if you try to walk just as a pedestrian to walk from Grave Street over to the Daylily or mm -hmm. to get over to Primo's it's you're out in the middle of that traffic for an hour till you get to the other side very dangerous. So there were ideas of, you know, putting in um, an island. So you walk from one to the other, and it slowed down traffic or directed traffic different areas. It's harder to plow. You know, Kevin puts a lot of his snow right there from downtown. It all kind of piles up right at the end. It makes it harder to see. It, it, which it's makes it harder to see. It makes it even harder when there's a pile of snow. To yes. See right. From all the those. All those things coming together. You're right. It's a very good point. So it's simple for you know for the guys and time to clear it, put it there. But 
for a guy trying to get out or move around, you don't know what's coming out of Main Street, uh, the four-way intersection, if you're trying to go left there. So maybe it's an, uh, a right only out of there. You know, we, that's that stuff we have to kind of look at. Let's see. Well, yeah, and that'll that'll tie into you know all the work we're doing. We've we've done we've uh, Vinod's been downtown and has already done sort of a basic evaluation. But all of those, I'm sure, all of that those projects would be part of the prioritization plan, changing those. But thank those you for coming and, and voicing that concern. And, and since it's a safety issue, it would be a top priority in my mind um, to do, yeah. address that. It's. You know, we all want everything to look more beautiful. There's no question. We want everything to look lovely. But safety is a number one issue for me. And, and I, I would say that that has been an issue for everybody. And I would say one would inform the other. If it's safe, if it's inviting, if there's businesses right. downtown that are thriving, it brings people, it's like a virtuous cycle that will keep. That's right. And, and any downtown that is successful, you look at it, is very high walkability rates and very high sociability. People feel safe and they feel they can walk very safely as well. So that is definitely part of the priority and, and that has certainly been the theme through all these different <coughs> meetings that people have been coming to, you know, for at least a decade. Right. Yeah, statistics show that the most successful downtowns are ones where people get out of their cars and walk, basically, that they walk from business to business and not drive from business to business. And, 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 and that's exactly what we've been trying to do, and we've you know, fiddled around over the years trying to do several different um, things. But we're really determined to make sure it happens this time. Yeah, and I would say we want to use the assets that we have, like Pam is on the committee and she's on the Lions Club, and yep. we have members who are on the Women's Club, so they're, we want to just kind of use pull everyone all, together. Everyone's who's civically yep. engaged, let's get everyone involved that we yep. can. Absolutely. We've been working I with agree. them. And I thank you for wanting, both of you, brand new people coming is wonderful, so thank you. Thank you. Yep. Any other comments, or then do you have next steps? Or anybody yeah. else want to? Oh, we have a comment? No, or oh, just say, no, say your, say your piece okay. and we'll... I live on South Main Street. Okay. And so there's a sidewalk area outside of Wolfie's and the yep. pack that's not a raised sidewalk. You mentioned that before, I remember, I think online or something. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. But thank you for bringing that up. Yep. I, I, we would want to make sure that it's listed somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And I think, it, do you want to talk about next steps when we have... Especially when we have kids walking yeah. and stuff. We want kids to be very cognizant of safety. Yeah. Yep. 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 Right. So, so thank you so much, everyone, for coming. We'll, it will incorporate all your feedback. Mostly it was for the board to hear so that they could uh, continue moving on the complete streets policy. Um, and so they will, you know, will make some revisions in terms of the performance measures, and we'll, that'll be back on a future agenda. I'll put all the materials that we referenced tonight, including the, the downtown center promotion plan, the walkability study, and the draft policy on the website as well in, in an area so you'll be able to find it easily. And as we uh, add any materials or do any additional uh, things, you'll, we'll put that information there as well. There will be other meetings about Complete Streets as the process goes along. I think we intend to have, um, we've actually submitted, um, uh, we also can apply to DOT for money for technical assistance to do the plan, which we've done. Um, and once we start that process, um, if we are working, continue to work with Time Bond, which we plan to, um, we'd have another meeting where they talk about the planning process and what some of the projects are on that plan, and we'd be able to, to have some discussion about that as well. Yeah. Um, there'll be some discussion, I think, in terms of the budget um, around capital planning, because there is a, we would like to put some money um, into that for next year for that preliminary design and design work so that if we can get in the funding for October of next year, we have some, some things done mm -hmm. and we're ready to go. And that is um, due December 1st, so we need to put in at least a, a, a preliminary thing after tonight. We have to just agree to move that forward so that we can submit to the CIPC and um, um, you know, make sure that that gets done. So please stay involved, stay engaged, and put comments out there. Or come on in and let us know how you're feeling or what you'd like to see. So keep it rolling. And, and make sure we signed in, that everyone signed in. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Make sure everyone Great. signs in because that's our documentation that we did jump through this hoop. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you so you much. Stay for the rest of the month. Oh, yeah. If you want to stay for the rest of the fun stuff, you're welcome. Yes, thank you so thank much. You. It was it's really good to meet you. And, uh, help yourself to any of these like Pam, thank you for coming down. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. I'm still here. Good, good. <laughs> All right. I'm not going anywhere, except to my cottage in Vermont. <laughs> Oh, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks again. Thanks. Thank you, Vanessa. Okay, the uh, fiscal year 2020 classification compensation plan. Well, I wanted to. To get the budget done. To get the, you know, to know what the department heads are working. Um, I would, and I would submit. Like You've take already it. taken under advisement previously. Yeah, so. I would like to. Um, then, but that's then your decision. Use this is the basis of um, for the budgeting. You know, the, the recommendation. So, uh, yeah, I every year Do I you struggle with this. want to just state for the record what the recommendation is. It's in the package. So yeah, it's just just it was mentioned before the personnel committee recommended. Um, Stay with the current compensation plan. Um, people would move along on their steps as they, as they do, and that anyone that was at the top step would receive a 2% a COLA based on the New England Northeast, Northeast uh, Index, I guess. What do you call it? Index? Um, I, I don't know if you want me to speak, but I've been struggling with this again. Every year I do, um, trying to figure out what is the right thing to do. Uh, to, you know, do we follow that recommendation and, you know, only give a cola to the people on the top um, and not everybody down below? Um, I, I'm always trying to get my head around, um, you know, how we pe pay people in town. And I, I value everybody that works here and what they do. And uh, people are hired at a, you know, I figure that top rate is kind of what a very experienced person would would make after they've been here for a while they know their job they're committing to this town and they come in every day and work to their fulfillment they don't need to ask a ton of questions they know where they're at at the top step people who start at the bottom have just got started and they're learning their career over the next 10 years nine or ten years um, depending on where they where they're hired on a step and, and move up to the top so um, I've always had a hard time deciding um, do people just automatically get a step every year? And I, you know, part of me says yes because that's, you know, they're they're building their career and their knowledge and their their um, contribution to the town and their job and their career. Um, the other part of me says, well, just because it's another year, why do you get an automatic raise where a lot of the private sector does not? Um, so, it, but it all it's the difference between municipalities and and private sector, and there is a vast difference between the two. Um, and, and how you get compensated. So I struggle not giving, uh, the, other, the other part of this as it gets confusing is if we don't put a COLA on this, every year this, that goes by this, this compensation schedule gets out of date. Um, so as we two or three or four years later, um, what we paid somebody when we hired him four years ago, we're still paying them that same rate to hire them. And if we applied that, whatever the cost of living raise was across that whole board and applied it to this amount every year, then it would keep up with inflation and we wouldn't have to keep, you know, every five years redoing this whole thing and doing a big study and are we paying everybody the right rate. So those are, those are the struggles I have trying to figure out what the right thing to do is. I, I care about the personnel board and their thought process and why they come and volunteer their time to feel like what a lot of them work in this industry and this is, you know, they feel like this is the right thing to do is to just um, allow the steps this year and, and allow a COLA for only the people at the top. 
but that does put the put the schedule out of whack when you start doing that. So um, I'll step back right there. But that's you know I, I could talk forever on this. <laughs> Anyone else want to have a word on it? I I mean I agree. We have we have to keep an eye on our um, schedule, but we do do need to start the budget process. I agree. So I I'm willing to start the budget process based on the recommendation and then take under advisement. I know Skip wanted to yeah, talk I, about a couple things. I do want to, before you vote, I do want to have a couple comments. So let me, if you would, pass those around just so you get the information. Uh, and let me quickly explain what I'm passing out. The first piece of paper, which is front and back, is the existing classification schedule uh, that we're operating under. Okay. The second page is the uh, proposed or, or the classification schedule as I understand it as proposed by the uh, personnel committee. The third page is the classification schedule with a 2% call. I used the 2% call just because we used the 2% call last year. Did you add that to all of them? Yes. It's 2% COLA across the board. The, uh, the next sheet of paper you've got, uh, salary schedule for Union 38 teachers. Three years. FY17, FY18, FY19. The only thing I'll say about that is, you can see, it is a salary schedule. It, uh, their steps are running down the side as opposed to running across the top as ours does. Their grades are bachelor's, bachelor's 15, master's, master's 15, master's 30, master's 45, CAGS, and PhDs. Uh, and then the last, the last sheet is the uh, instructional assistants and other educational support personnel. And again, you have that for FY17, FY18, and FY19. The, uh, the teachers and support personnel receive a, call, receive a step every year. They also receive a COLA every year. I believe the COLA for year one, which was FY17, was 1%, although I'm not sure. The COLA for FY18 and the COLA for FY19 are 2.5%. We gave a COLA last year of 2%. So we actually did reduce, in comparison, our salaries have dropped last year. And this proposed salary increase for next year we don't know where that stands. Um, teachers have contract negotiations for next year. Now, I've done those salary negotiations for 25 years that I served in the school committee, and I can assure you that I don't ever remember anything less than a 2% COLA. You might get a 1.5% here and a 1.5% there, but in the second and third years, you make up for it. Uh, I think we're doing a disservice to to our town employees, non non school employees, by not giving them a cola. I understand the arguments that have been made that we're giving these raises, the step increases, that we shouldn't have to give colas to. Well, if that's true, then we ought to do the same for all of our employees, which means not only our own town employees, but the school employees as well. They are our employees. We pay their salaries. No different from the town employees. I can tell you two years ago, uh, before we had the new salary schedule, that there was a lot of town employees who were extremely unhappy with how they were being treated. Uh, I think the salary schedule better than nothing. I don't say that this was the best. There may be alternatives, and I'm willing to listen to it, but I don't see that the recommendation by the personnel committee uh, does much. 
It tells the employees that they're not worth a cola. All so they can get is a step. That not only they get the step, they get the cola as well. Yes. Excuse me. You're advocating that not only they get a step raise, they get a cola. I'm as basically well. advocating the third program, third page in here, which does a salary schedule plus a two percent cola. Right. I'm making a one and a half percent cola. I don't care. Uh, but I think you at least ought to talk to the employees. I'm not sure. What have you ever talked to employees that I don't want to raise? Well, no. I think I think you ought to listen to the employees. I think you ought to listen to the employees and hear their concerns. That's all. I didn't say that you ought to turn it over and say to the employees, well, "Why don't you tell me what you think you deserve?" But listen to their concerns. The concerns is give me an idea of what you're talking about. Well, for example, you're treating us differently than you're treating other town employees. Uh, don't the other town employees have unions and those are contract negotiation type in, things? In, the, as you like see the here, police. these are, but there are some town employees in the school that aren't unionized. I believe the janitors aren't unionized, clerical workers are not unionized, and the uh, uh, cafeteria workers aren't unionized. So, and I, and I don't know what they're getting for salary increases, to be honest with you. So I can't say for sure that they're getting Two and a half percent colas. I'm also concerned with the creation of basically an additional step. Now, it, I didn't see the, the personnel committee saying we're creating another step, but the impact of that two percent, they're leaving step 10 as it is, and they're taking those employees who are currently on step 10, and they're giving them a two percent raise. That's, a set, that's another step, as far as I can tell. What are you going to do next year? So then, the same so, thing again? But listen to what you're saying. So you're saying that the people at 10, because that's the top step, they're getting a 2%, that's the same as a step. So why wouldn't that apply all the way? So we're giving everybody a step raise and a cola. That's two steps. No. You can't have both. Well, that's just what you just said. No, I did not. You, Stop you, trying to put words in my mouth. Okay, Skip. You know you what said I said. You know what I said. 10, I said, 10, said wait, let me please, finish. Let me finish. Go ahead. You said at 10, and we give them a 2% cola, that's the same as a step. That's what you said, correct? They're leaving step 10 as it is. Correct. And they're creating this other group of employees right. who are being paid more than the highest salary schedule. If that's not another step, I don't know what is. Okay, so that would apply the same as what you're saying down the road. If somebody's at step whatever and they're going from step three to step four and a cola, that's like they're going to step five. It's the same. Then you're saying that for the teachers. What do you say? You don't agree that, you know, that the... I'm, I'm, se I'm separating Why are out we the treating teachers? our employees in this town differently than we treat our employees at the school? That's my question, and I would like your answer. That's up to the school department. That's not us. Is that not correct? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know, but I believe it's up to the school department what they get. Well, it's a negotiating committee that we've yeah. had discussions who's representing the town at the table. You're, uh, or are you recommending that our town employees should really consider unionization? That, that if they really want to raise, that's the only way they're going to get it is to unionize. They get a raise every year. I've only been here three years, but everybody got a raise every year, and it's to the tune of seven percent. No, it's not that much. Mm -hmm. But close. By the time you add the steps and the coal, it's, it's not that much. But I, but well, I, we did, oh. we did the step in the coal last year. Two years or, ago. Or we corrected the compensation schedule because it, it got so far behind. So and, and what right. Skip is talking about is addressing the, our compensation schedule. And so it doesn't get so far behind that we feel that we absolutely are compelled, no matter what the economic conditions are, to correct it. The other, the other thing I'm trying I to mean, this is what get happens with this. around my mind is is the, the person at step 10, um, I mean, that's truly what we think that job should pay once they get there. Um, you know, but it's just a matter of putting in time. What, what if the person at step five has enough capability to be at step 10? It's just a matter of kind of time. It's a longevity kind of thing. And it's, um, I, I don't know if that's, you know, I, 
it's hard being on a schedule because I'd like to be able to just hire people and pay them what I think they contribute to the to the job. Um, you, know, you know, being stuck where automatically they get a step, but they're they're actually being underpaid they? until they get to this, this <coughs> time frame. Really, the, I mean, we're getting a value out of that employee for five years until they get, or what, if they hire at step <coughs> five or three, for seven years we pay them less than what we're going to pay them at the top. And if we bring them to the top and then they stop. So, I mean, so I'm trying to figure out, like, do we ever, do they get to that top level and then just, and then just stop? We, we Why did, do we give a 2% to we, the top? We did, we did try multiple ways not to do steps because I'm, I'm against steps, actually, because certain people, I mean, people are people. Some people contribute really a lot, and some just show up. And, and we're fortunate that the majority of our workforce yes, they do. is really good. They work hard. And they work hard. And so, but by doing the steps, you are underpaying people that are truly performing, and sometimes you are overpaying the people that are just showing up. And so, there isn't a huge incentive, and so, I mean, that's what I struggle with, because I do see people that are really committed and really doing stuff, and then some other people are less so, and it's very, it's, it's hard, because you want to be fair, and... I also had a couple of questions on, I know we spent a lot of time on positioning the grades, and there was a big study on how many points went to each one, but I, I felt um, the assistant town clerk position should be in a grade three, and I felt that the town account should be in a grade six. But well, there's a whole a process for that. I That's know there a is. Grading manual and but all I of get, that. So I get it's all consistent that. and fair and equitable. So but it's I, not just I still feel how that. you feel. That's that's how. <laughs> or how based on the amount of work that I see them do, I think they should be at a grade four. I mean, a grade three for assistant town clerk and a grade five for six. And, and Trevor, I, I understand what you're saying, and, and I can... That needs I to be can, dealt with a separate... I understand class. that. I'm just saying we're voting on this, and this is the time I, I'm one talking reason, about it. So. One of the reasons that we have a step schedule is to avoid those actions that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think somebody deserves more than what Not somebody. Getting. No, no, no. The position. Huh? Well, then fine. That, we have we have a process. That's what I'm saying. That's, we, I'm just voting. I'm just voicing that that I feel like that fact, we should go through, through that process. That process yeah. for numerous numerous employees. Yes, I hear you. Uh, and so, if the job that they're doing or that their assigned duties have changed, which I think they have, then I certainly have no. And that's what we have a personnel committee for. Bring it to the personnel committee. Say, yep. look, this position has changed. We need to upgrade it. Okay. And back to your to the comments that you made about those employees who aren't working to their to where we think they should be working. Then quite honestly, we need an evaluation system and then based on the evaluation, uh, if they're not doing their job, it's not fun, but if they're not doing their job, terminate them. Difficult as that is, it's 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 what we should be doing. If they are doing their job, or, but that doesn't mean you just automatically go terminate them. Understood. You do have to tell them right. what it is that they're not doing. And give them a chance. Give them, give them an opportunity. And if you've got somebody who's been doing their job for, and I've seen it with teachers, I've seen principals say, oh, that person's ridiculous. And it's, hey, John, Mary's been here, or whatever their name is, for 20 years. They've been doing their job for 20 years. Go look at their, their evaluations. And you find out that they've been evaluated well for 20 years. And now you're saying they're not doing their job and you want to terminate them? Give me a break. If you tell them they're doing their job and they're not, shame on you. So that, I, you know, those, I guess that kind of lays it out. Um, I don't have, you know, Turn to the personnel committee and say, come up with something better than, than the salary schedule that we're operating under. And, and I know it's tough. We do need to start budgeting. But to be honest with you, let's do it right. And if it takes another week or it takes another month to get the salary schedule adjusted properly, whatever that may be, 
Well, they think it is proper. Well, I, you know. You don't. But they do. here, here's the problem. And the only person that's on the board is Carolyn that was there in 2010 when we had this problem. And essentially, I'll tell you, it looked, what we did in 2010 looks very similar to what we're trying to do in 2020. And I want to, that creating this amorphous other, you know, we'll do a 2% here or, or something. Look, salary schedules aren't great. Just better than the alternatives. And, and this alternative is not what I would consider better. I'm going to ask a question. I mean, how many people have worked for the town who have quit because they don't make enough money to get good enough benefits? People move on. People move on. Well, you got a salary schedule. It tells them, hey, look, you stick around here. The procedure has been that you move up the salary schedule as you get greater, uh, uh, you know, you work into your job a bit more. You learn more. You understand more. You're more valuable to the town. We'll increase your, it's a salary schedule, it's not perfect. Yep. If this were private sector, I'd say throw this out and start doing evaluations and, and use a performance evaluation. It's not. It's almost impossible. Everyone, you can go talk with your wife and she will disagree probably with me, but I can't see how you can install a performance evaluation system and give merit increases as much as we might like to. I think, well, I think we've gotten the personnel board to understand that, that it's important to do them, but not to tie them to increases, mm -hmm. but simply to tie them to improvement in work or right. not and gone. Right. So I just want to say that we've talked at length at, at they, the, I've been at the personnel board meetings, they've uh, discussed this. I've also let the department heads know who I said tell your staff um, that this was the recommendation of the personnel board and that I thought it was likely based on conversations I had had individually with board members that they were going to support it. So I just want to let you know that that was what, what they've, you know, the information they've received. I also believe, and I've seen the already, you know, I've been at those meetings where they've discussed it, they, the, the personnel board is very interested in starting earlier, looking at a bigger picture and how to address this. I would say their leanings are more conservative than, than you're discussing, um, but that, that's the personal board that we, we have now. Um, and I think the real challenge is, is the public, public private sector, or not even private sector, many people work for themselves, or they're retired, mm -hmm. and it's hard for people to see it from very well, that, that's the I, challenge. I fit into that retired group. So. I'm sorry? I said I fit into that retired group. Oh, I, I don't know. It's, it is, it's always a tricky thing, but it, it doesn't matter if we're talking about salaries or uh, the sewer plant or the schools. You know, we still have to look at the taxpayers. And, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, so let me ask you, types of raises all the time. What's the, the time, difference? So. What's the cost difference between a 2% COLA and giving 2% to those, only to those on step 10. What is it going to cost the town? I have no idea. And how are you going to make a decision if you, don't, bucks. if you don't have that? If, how much? About 15,000. I think the difference uh, could be, if we added a 2% COLA, it would be 23,000 more, 24,000 more. That's what it costs to give everybody a COLA, I believe. I could be wrong. And what does it cost to give 2% on step 10? So, and you're going to make a decision without that. I think about seven grand. So that's what I mean. It's like 15 grand. It's, it's not. It's not a lot of money. Amount of money. I also think that in the future we should have the personnel board be the one that delivers the report directly to the board and answers that. and I questions and explains their thinking. Um, I've done that with other communities, and I think that. Skip, makes the how most much sense. did we spend to correct the salary um, schedule? Not last time, but the time Two years before. ago. I really don't did. know. I, it got to the point where it was, it was extremely difficult to put a salary schedule together because of the extremes that we had. Uh, not so much well, what was happening is we were, hiring, we were hiring at step three and four instead of step one. Yes. And, um, and that will continue to happen, I think. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what it was, to be honest with you. But it was, I know that it was... It was difficult Step one to, three. to come up with a salary schedule that incorporated everybody, and as it turned out, there was one individual who didn't fit in the salary schedule. Um, 
I think the, the addition of this, uh, their thinking for the 2% at step 10 uh, was that there were, it's getting crowded up there. There are a number of people are up there, are almost yeah. there, and that's and we're so that was grateful the, that the thinking of the committee. Are here yeah. and wanting to stay and you know, have given I, mm -hmm. 10 years or more to this community. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to have to let the comp schedule get out of whack too much. And, and $15,000 one way or the other on a $16 million budget is not hugely impactful. But my, my big thing is that um, we do have to discuss this, and I really want the people to submit their budgets. So... I would like to start the budgeting process based on the recommendation of the personnel committee, and then that we continue this discussion um, because we we need to figure out. I, I don't want what I would like to do is not. Um, I'd like to figure out a way that we have a formula to update our compensation schedule on a right. regular basis versus just right. coming in. If it's every and, right, having this discussion. You know, every year, let's it do a cola. Like every well, what four if the cola? What if the cola is you know five or six percent in That's next true. year? Well, we bench. Uh, we did bench. They did benchmark it, and I think we'll use that in the future. And, and if that goes to five yes, percent, it know. ever does. <laughs> well, but you know what know. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm saying I'd like. To, I'd like to have us, because the point is not to have the comp schedule get out of whack. So how do how do we? Well, we I know one of the can things we, they talked a about formula. was a longer a longer schedule. All of that. I think it would be useful to have the committee come, right. representatives from the committee. Well, and maybe we can just be more thoughtful of it because we should have a formula, can we and we shouldn't have this discussion every year, because truly people want. I mean, I truly would love to have people have a step in a cola. So, but we need to have a formula that works for us. Why don't Why don't we um, move forward, as you said, with with department heads starting to submit their budgets with the recommendation, um, and then um, I would make a motion to invite the personnel committee uh, to our next meeting to to explain how they felt and um, and and have a, deep, a little bit deeper discussion about this. Yeah, and uh, I mean, because we They're have... They're meeting next week, so um, I can great. deliver Yeah, them. I mean, it, w it should be able to figure out some way to come up with I mean, they've got something. a vast experience yeah. in the industry, and I'd love to hear their thoughts on because why, what happens why we is shouldn't this, give it this to the does others. get out of whack. That's my concern. And, yeah. and, and maybe they have an idea of, like, every three it. years we, we put a cola across the whole thing to keep everybody... No, so we don't wind up like we were I don't know. a couple of years ago, right? Where it was way out of whack, and that's why we did everything over again. Yeah, um, but the problem is, it's not a regular amount on our budget. We need to we need to smooth it out a bit for our budgeting process, so mm -hmm. we're not, you know, you're not having this. I do want to be fair to our taxpayers, and but I also want to be fair to our employees that work very hard for us. Do yep. a good job. I think we both feel the exact same way. And so there has to be some solution to this. It's a formulated, more formula mm -hmm. oriented. I would feel more comfortable with that kind of solution because this is going to be a problem every single year. Or we scrap the schedule and come up with a different idea, a range. <sighs> Just a range. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. That's under discussion, too, at the personnel board. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A range. Right, so we can move I, I just low, want you mid, to know that it's a huge. What is it, low, mid, max? I don't know how many meetings and how many hours went into this. Got just giving more. you an idea. A few that more to go. To scrap it and do something else is, like, incredible amount of Sorry. Work. I didn't mean to no, stab no, no, anybody no. in the heart. <laughs> no, it's just like, oh, my God, Trevor. That's I like know. Meetings. It's hard. It, it is hard. I, I, you know, I struggle I mean, it's a lot more work than you think. Yep. So what, what are you doing? So I think, I think we're just going to move. I don't, I don't we're think moving we need to forward for budgeting this. purposes. I recommend that on the recommendation. Okay. As if the planning board uh, All right. carries well, and we'll have that discussion. Let me talk with uh, Brenda tomorrow about that. Okay. She does all the. Oh, personnel board. Sorry. Planning board? Planning board can decide everyone's rates. Don't give us anything. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, first, uh, Finance Committee has a representative. Uh, to the uh, personnel board, and okay. he's come up with lots of different ideas and proposals, and perhaps he and, and the chair That'd or someone else would That'd be great. I'd love to hear from him. 
That'd be good. Um, do you want to talk about the other personnel item, Carolyn, that uh, you have while Kevin is Oh, here? yes, Kevin, before you leave. Um, you better we talk, were hoping, Carolyn. Yes. <laughs> we were hoping. Um, I talked to Janamine today. Um, you know we have the opportunity to have a retired person from who lives in town um, for their, uh, that was involved with the UMass recycling. So the Deerfield Recycling um, Revolving Fund has $14,900 in it, and the Recycling Dividend Program has 5500 at the moment, and at the end of the month would get $42 more hundred dollars. And so if we hire a temporary person to, like, spearhead and reconfigure or, or just reimagine or whatever, work on the recycling um, and be a, you know, a, dump, a landfill person. Mm -hmm. um, it would be, for the rest of the year, it would be less than $8,000. So um, I was hoping that we could post um, for this job and number one, then we could come up maybe with a job description between now and the end of the year and we could also figure out if this is something that we want to do permanently. Um, because in the next, not, not the, the um, in um, 19, but the following year, 20, our MRF contract is gonna be up. And just like everybody else across the country, the recycling is, is a huge issue. We don't, we don't have any problems at the moment in the sense that we don't have that much contamination and, and problems with the quality of our um, recycling, but we're gonna have to figure something out. And we've worked so hard over the years to make the landfill operation be a break even um, I, I want to take advantage of this wonderful person. I think he's, he's very nice, he's knowledgeable, but I also think he's firm enough to, you know, watch and keep an eye on the bulky item dumpster and the metal container and all that kind of stuff. And we really, that's what we really have to do is come up, we, we have voted in the last town meeting to put new fencing up and reconfigure some of the work, and it would be nice I think for you, Kevin, to have someone that you could work with and it would be the point person for that. And also from a safety <coughs> point of view, we have a sep second dump attendant during, you know, Tuesday and Thursday. And um, so I was hoping the board would support the posting of this job, um, a temporary um, landfill person as we work on this and see how we want this to evolve. I don't have a job description other than the job description for the landfill person, but I, I'm seeing this person being in charge of recycling. And so we have to put together a job description, but we want to see how, it, how, how we're gonna do this. And, and do we feel that it is even actually worth having a, land, a recycling kind of person? Or is it just somebody that's like more in charge for you? You know, like assistant mm -hmm. kind of thing. So. I'd like to hear what Kevin thinks. Yeah. Well, do I agree having a second person there on Tuesday and Thursday? I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, obviously, the, the position has to be posted. So that way we do everything by law. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if nobody else applies, then that's great. If other people apply, then obviously we have to go through the hiring process to make sure we're doing everything correctly. Um, my questions are, again, because I try to make sure that my I's are dotted, my T's are crossed, does this something that has to go in front of personnel? Um, one. Two, are those funds that we receive, can we utilize those funds as salaries? Yes. We I can. did talk to Jana Mean. She okay. said it's such a, a broad description that it's perfectly okay. She actually thought it was a good idea to have um, someone that was a little bit more now, I don't want to say in charge, but mm -hmm. someone that you could depend on and that you, you know, we could do stuff with sure. at the transfer station. You know, because I'm, you know, in, in, I'm trying to wrap my head around, and I don't have the information on this, so this is probably a little bit hard for me to wrap my head around. I'm trying to figure out what more we could be doing there to enhance our recycling program besides possibly cleaning up a little bit more of what comes in. And again, I, I, I don't know, so I'm sure there's plenty of programs out there and other ideas on doing things. But me right now, right off the top of the head, how else are we going to go ahead and increase our recycling at this point would be for somebody to stand there and take the trash bags apart and pull the, no, you, well, know, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around 
what are we going to be able to do to, you know, the justification behind the person right off the bat, I'm 100% behind it, safety for when Bud got hurt that one day, when he cut his finger real bad, you know, if our volunteer didn't happen to be there, what does he do? Knowing Bud, he would just go ahead and wrap it up and stay there and, until he bled to death. That's the way Bud is. But what I'm getting at is, is and again, I, I agree with the second person wholeheartedly. And if we can go ahead and fund that wholeheartedly, and if, and if it's, it's no problem with, with the uh, um, personnel, I'm 110% I'm behind it. I'm just trying to wrap my head around how much more we can actually do recycling-wise to increase our revenues per se. Well, what we have to do is we have to do we have to increase our revenues because we're going to have tipping fees, not Correct. not this not this next year, but the following year. Correct. Yeah. We have like eighteen it's months. Gonna be, it's going to be a new right. set of contracts to go through. The right, month. and there's going to be new conditions for it. So this is to be proactive mm -hmm. instead of reactive. Sure. And the reason why I wanted to do this temporary is because we need to evolve the job description. We don't have a job description for a recycling person. Right. But here we have an experienced person that's enthusiastic and, and seemingly a really nice person. So, I mean, I've had several conversations with him. So I think he would be a good fit. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is go out in the community and figure out what's coming down the road and, and how are we going to, you know, keep our costs you know, right. from going, from skyrocketing. Exactly. We, do, we are not in a position to have, to subsidize the landfill, or the transfer station like we mm -hmm. used to. Exactly. And we're not going back there. Right. So, and people don't want to pay increased rates and stuff like that. So the key is to try to understand the recycling. And I, I, I honestly, Kevin, I don't know. Right. But that's why the job description needs to evolve. And that's why I'm looking at this. Sure. This is not a budgeted item. So we could pay for it out of the recycling thing, and then we can revolve, evolve the job description as, as you know, I'm, I'm hoping that he would be able to help with the job description mm -hmm. and that we would have a permanent job description. Because we were talking about different things for your department, right. not trying to micromanage, yep. but one of the things was hiring, um, you know, people to mow the lawns in the cemetery so we can use the full-time highway persons to do, like, the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. You know, projects that we would be cheaper for us to do in-house than Correct. to actually contract out. So the idea was, you know, just to be more efficient. And so the idea is to do the same thing mm -hmm. at the landfill. What can we do more efficiently? You know, um, how do we have the traffic flow? And, and, and help you with the layout, because re we did allocate money at the town meeting to repair the fencing and do mm -hmm. some flow changes and do another compactor and all that kind of stuff. Well, having someone there and seeing how the flow goes and, and having a background in all this kind of stuff might be able to give us a better setup and, sure. and more efficient, more efficient and, and someone that Janamine could work with on a more focused basis so maybe we can get more grants. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I called her up initially to find out could, could we get a grant to fund him um, for this and there aren't any uh, grants for recycling at the moment. But she, she was saying that this is an opportunity she'd be, you know, be thrilled mm -hmm. to work with someone on a more focused basis so maybe we can get more grants to be more efficient at our landfill. And so to me this was an opportunity, this person is definitely interested. Um, he seems to be really well qualified and he seems to be really nice. So honestly, it seems like a good opportunity for us to try to move forward. So I was hoping the board would support this um, small expenditure and take the risk of trying to um, come up with something between now and the end of the year and decide how what we want in a job description and how we see this person working in, other than just being a second person with Bud, which honestly we should be doing anyway. It's not safe to have him out there by himself. But um, well, I, I was I, envisioning this as more of keeping our costs down ultimately. Well, I, 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 other than, like Kevin said, having the second person around I don't think is a bad idea at all. Uh, but if you're going to take eight or nine thousand dollars out of the, the small revenues that we gain to hire somebody I don't see how that job would pay for itself it's just going to be another expense 
Oh, I, I, I feel like we're gonna, we're being proactive and we're gonna come up with something. I mean, I mean, are you planning on, I mean, Kevin's got a budget, his budget breaks down between expenses, other than salaries and other expenses. Does he got some place in his budget for salary items that he can pay for this person? I didn't think so. No, it's not out of my existing salary. It's not underneath my existing are budget. Are you planning on coming to the finance committee and asking for a reserve fund transfer? This or is. Are you planning on taking this to the town meeting and asking them to appropriate money? Because there's no appropriation that I know of. I'm. I'm. There's. There's. There's monies that is part of the recycling program. It's not. Has not been appropriated. It goes into a fund. Good point. It needs to be appropriated, as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, well, Jana Mean said we can use that money. Who is she? In the re she's from the Solid Waste District, and she said she she said the language. Well, it, it may be allowable through DEP's program, but it's different. It's different from you know she doesn't necessarily know about the DOR procedures for appropriating, and you know that kind of. Well, thing. you I mean, can it's, expend it's, Deerfield Recycling Revolving Fund on a. Person right, involved but, but in recycling. It's an allowable thing to do in terms of using that money, but you still would need to go through these protocols, personnel board, finance committee, town meeting, whatever, you know. To, Even to for a temporary forward. position? We didn't do that with Diana. But, but she's in a position. There is money in the budget for right. people in your This It is selectman's Right. We, so we didn't fill the executive assistant. You know, it remained open, so that's where the money was coming from. Um, I suppose you could put this person in there. So, we have a few we got some trash. Here's a thought. Okay. Here's a thought. What about hiring this person as a consultant? If, they're, if this person really could be uh, helpful, I don't know who it is. Um, I just heard we had a volunteer up there. And basically, basically I what I ended up doing is, is I was able to, I, I had him fill out <laughs> a job application so we have some information on him. Where is it? It's in my office. Oh. He's, not, he's nobody right now, so mm -hmm. it's in my office. Well, it so then I, in turn, went ahead just to make sure I'm covering the town's liabilities. Mm -hmm. is I went ahead and I had, did a background check on him to make sure there was no criminal issues. No problems there, but that's as far as I went. Um, I, I don't know Jim that well. Um, again, like you said, very, you know, he's a nice guy. He seems to be right spot on that, you know, if somebody comes up, he jumps right up and looks to make sure they got a sticker. And if somebody even remotely comes anywhere near the, the bulky item dumpster, he is like up and out and ready to say, where's my check? Fantastic. Um, but I don't know what he did at UMass. I mean, I don't know what he did. I, I, I worked at UMass for five years, and I knew what the recycling program did up there, and I knew the people that worked up there. So my question is, is granted, that was a long time ago. My question is, is, I think I would need, obviously, to go ahead and do a little background check on the guy to make sure that he's not one of the sloughs that used to be up there. I'm sure he's not. Well, but, not based on what I've seen. Exactly. Myself. But, you know, once again, you know, if it, I just, I need to do my job. I need to make sure that the people we're bringing on are Well, that would be part of posting Exactly. It. So, but, you know, so, so as far as being able to do that, you know, and bringing on the second person, I'm 110% I'm behind the second person, at the very least, for safety reasons. Um, but how the funding comes out about it, that's beyond my scope. Because wow. I have nothing well, within my existing budget for the transfer station at this time. Right. I'm, I think it's a good idea. I just feel like we probably got to go through a few more hoops first. Well, that's fine. Make as sure long as it's in next year's budget if you want to do it. Um, well, or make sure we have... Um, well, can't we just bring this to the personnel committee on Monday? Uh, well, we'd have to get it on the agenda, but we have to develop a job. To, that's what I'm talking about, is developing but, a job but description. But what I'm saying is we don't have a job description because we're hoping this person will work with us to develop the job description. Question. We go right at How about if, if this is something you, you possibly are thinking about, bring the person on as an existing job description, as a transfer station attendant, and then work on whatever you want to work on from there. You know what I'm saying? 
So, so in other words, if you want to bring somebody on, if you want to go ahead and go to That's personnel. What, that is what you, Carolyn is asking. Right. But yeah, I'm asking to put this on as a temporary and Tem then. Temporary utilizing then, the existing transfer right. station, transfer station attendant. attendant right. document, which is what you're going to need to be able to bring to personnel. Right. And then afterwards, you well, we can have to have a hiring process. Work through right. whatever else you want to go ahead and do for uh, right. if we want to expand that position. Yeah, it sounds like well, we would need personnel. We would need to make sure it's appropriated correctly. Some place you're going to have to. And a hiring I, process. That's getting a little technical, but I, somewhere I've been told that you know before you do anything in the state, you need an appropriation for it. Spend money. Yeah, but well, all right. I won't argue, but it well, here's, like, well, here's the question I have: like that. Is, is is that the money doesn't have to be appropriated out of that fund when I spend it for the recycling things, like when we were doing the the, the trash buckets, when we were doing the the bins, you know, things like that. No, the language is sufficiently broad right. that you can use. So I'm so I'm just how? not no no. What I'm getting at is, is we're not appropriating the money. So what I'm trying to get at is is for for skips position right now, presently right now, when we spend that money, there is no official appropriation no. for that no. money, is what I'm trying to say. No. Is this the revolving fund money? You're yes. Correct. It's a Deerfield Recycling Revolving Account, and it's also the Recycling Dividend Program. And you don't use it to offset Either one. Budget. Usually I do, but we don't utilize all of the money to do that. Normally what we'll do is we'll take one of the spendings because I think Jan was a little You're, offset that there wasn't enough money in there right. as much as she thought, but it's because we do offset it one payment mm -hmm. of their assessments per year out of that fund. Yes, she allows that to happen. Correct. Because she b believes it's correct broad enough definition. Correct. But she doesn't want you to use the whole. No, we don't use the whole thing. We do yeah. one payment. Well, using per this. Year using this payment out of it, is that defeating, de depleting the fund? I don't know how much is in the fund. But uh, right now there's about, I think about. 14900 So you're taking half of it to pay okay. an employee. It's, it's in there now. We, we continually get checks. And, and the, under the recycling dividend program is, is 5500 which Kevin, it was 6800 Kevin had used a little bit. And then we're supposed to get another check for 4200 Yeah, I was going to say, I just saw the paperwork come through for 4200 Yeah, we're, that's coming. That should be, should be showing yeah. some of the next So either account, couple months, but. you could split it between either account, or you could use it out of one or the other. There's Again, enough how, money. How, how the money, and I'm, I'm not trying to downplay my part of this, but how the money comes, where the money comes from, that's, if it's not out of my regular budget, then right. it's not my forte. So you guys need to figure out where the money's gonna come from, how you wanna do it. Again, I support the person as, as a secondary attendant, and if we wanna expand that, I, again, I support that, because any more help that I can get at this point in time right now would be phenomenal for the simple so fact. So you do you see a need for a person there? I see a need for a second person there. We, there, there should be nobody there up there working alone. Realistically, I mean, you think about it, you know, the guy's there, he's there eight hours. You're not giving him any time off, no breaks, no nothing, um, no time off for lunch. I mean, how, how, how does that work, you know? I mean, in all feasibility, you know, you're not even really giving him, feasibly, you're not giving him bathroom breaks. I mean, obviously, he takes them as needed, but, you know, there are no, there are no breaks. I mean, because I would imagine through labor laws, you're supposed to, Yes. At the very least, allow some different things, which we're not allowing to do right now. I think they're allowed, allowed, but allowed they're allowed, and how they take them is up to them. No really. different than like a trooper on the highway. You know, right. they're doing details for eight hours. Or right. So, so, so again, I, that's not my forte. That's not what I do. So, so I, I support was blindsided by that. this. Kevin mentioned a department heads meeting that he had this new volunteer up at the transfer station. And you happened to be in the office, and I asked you about it because he said you had, and you, you told me you had talked to him and you wanted to hire him and all of this. It's like, well, well, <laughs> there's a process. There's a process. You know, it has to involve the whole board. I, I know. That's why I'm talking about it. No, but you'd already gone way down the road with this individual. No, I, I just was advocating that trying to figure out how we could get a second person because of the safety issues 
and also how we're going to do how we're going to be proactive because Trevor and I have been to several meetings where they talk about recycling being the hugest thing because China's not taking plastic anymore and that all of our expenses are going to be skyrocketing in the next few, you know okay, couple so few to pull years this apart I think we all agree I hope you do that it would be safer to have two people there at yes. all times yes. when you're over. Yes. yes number 1 there's no general consensus about that I have heard Do we need to focus job. more effort on having a top-notch recycling program and maybe having someone with background in that who's also more engaged and interested in the work of uh, the I Solid Waste so. District and recycling and the grants that we've got, which is dissipated and distributed among many different employees? Exactly. That would be helpful as well. So, but targeting a person for a job as an employee is not the way to do it. Diana came on as a consultant. Um, David is here as a temporary employee. Um, so we, we would have to follow some route like that. Then we'd have to look carefully. Diana has just pulled up how you can use the recycling dividend program money for staff. It's not that simple. It looks like a parent, if we're going to use any of that money, um, it's got to be to raise a part-time to a full-time position or to create a new recycling coordinator position. So if it's other monies we're using, I think there's more leeway, but it's a specifically through that program, there's limitations on that. So um, I more research that needs so to be I done. think... And the other one doesn't say anything about staff. Which, which program? The, uh, the smart, this recycling recovery program. Okay. So it doesn't say we can't have do use right. that for it's not staff. one of the eligible items. Okay, so we, you know. Janet means so we could use both. So Maybe she has language. Yeah. She, she did the research on it. I mean, I well, don't why, doubt Janet. Well, maybe if why? We have a new coordinator. Yeah. All right. I feel like this is driven more by meeting somebody who has it's, some It's driven by the opportunity to have someone that is very interested and enthusiastic and is meeting a, a, a mm -hmm. huge uh, an issue that's coming down the pike. Kevin doesn't have time right. to deal with this. Did we ever have, did this town ever have a recycling committee? No, we've just had it as so. part of the because energy committee. Because that's what I've worked with we in other communities. And in one of them, we were lucky enough to have a full-time person. They didn't work at the transfer station. Well, they did occasionally, but they applied for all the grants, they managed the grants and all of that. But I think that program, that person retired and they didn't fill it, but they had an active recycling committee to do hmm. this stuff. Um, and that might be a, a short-term thing given the changing in the market and all that, but I think there's so many different issues here. The, the hiring, the single person, the posting, the, uh, the use, you know, what funds, all of that, that it's just can't be done like that. I, I've, I've honestly been talking about it since August. Well, so I didn't hear it's that not until a three weeks ago. <laughs> the first I heard of that was three weeks ago, and this is an employee. My office handles this kind of stuff, and Kevin thought I, it wasn't a, a volunteer. Is that accurate to say? Or? He, presently, he's he's been volunteering for. He's quite been some time. volunteering. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, but, I've been and that was, and that was what I asked at the at the department heads meeting is, is do we have a protocol for volunteers? I mean, what do we do? I mean, do we do we get a application from them? Um, very similar to like what they do with the senior center. Is he you know, willing that, to what, volunteer? What is the I had no idea. You well, know, so. if he's volunteering, why? I don't. Because you can use. At, he would like this to be a job, and he will go elsewhere. And then we've lost the opportunity to handle the whole recycling uh, issue. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, skip, I mean, Kip, if you don't want to hire him, fine. No, I'm just saying that it, you know it's gone from volunteer. To, well, if we're not going to hire him, he's going to go somewhere else. I don't know. It's, it's, well, it's I mean, he's 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 just retired, yeah. and he has apparently the good background. He's enthusiastic, and he would be. I think he would be extremely helpful. Well, for why him. don't we go through the process like Wendy says, and he can apply, and he'll probably be the only one or the most qualified one, and, and then he'd be hired. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I said, I, I, what I'm concerned about: dot my eyes and cross my T's because so, I don't need so, any issues coming back and biting me later. Is what and, I'm and, about. and Kevin, I absolutely. That's why I decided to bring it up because mm -hmm. it never, nothing was happening. So, do can we post it? And well, first, you got to go through 
first you got to figure out how you're going to fund it, and then you got to figure right. out. Right. We have to figure out, you know, just verify through, that. I mean, I. Personal. Information isn't enough. So I, so I well, think it's so so nobody was personnel. doing the research, so that was I why I did the research. I never heard about it until three weeks ago. <sighs> All right. Okay. But I, I, Jenna Mean is very knowledgeable, and I have no. I know. I think the world of her. Uh, she's absolutely I'm capable. So. It, yeah, I can I can reach out to Jan tomorrow also. So. Okay. Let me do that. Why don't you find out? Yeah, I've got some other questions okay. on, on top of. Let's both I, I won't I won't in. get we'll into your together. personal end of it. I'm going to ask more so of. Programs and I stuff see like that, we could so. do this if there's interest in doing this, if we find out those funds can be used that way, and um, if we use the current job description, you, and there's a determination made, we need a fourth person there, and they are capable and willing to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're talking about hiring them on as an employee, correct? Yeah. But we've got to go through a process. Yeah. Right. We have to go through Tuesdays a process. And Thursdays. Oh, right. Sixteen hours, so sixteen hours a week. No, no, no. Well, the schedule could change. Also, who you assign to who. And if someone's out on Saturday or right. whatever. The well, either, either way, it would still be sixteen hours, no, regardless, because if, if, again, going on my basic um, thought of having two people there on Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's where I come up with the sixteen hours. Right. So, so if you go ahead and have him work a Saturday, the Saturday still guy would have. go to Tuesdays right. or, or however. Or if there's but, somebody but calls way, out sick, you have a, right, another exactly. person so, available. Right. Long story short is you're looking for a 16-hour-a-week employee. Right. No vacation. Yeah, we have to post. Okay. We have to post. All right. Oh, oh, we don't, we don't have to go have through to an extensive, you know, if you put it on the website and post it here, I'll look at the... I think it I mean, does say it something about newspapers. We have, have a very limited newspapers. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Yeah. But it has to be. If it's on our yeah, website, the and website it's posted and out here. Out front, that's adequate enough. That I would think that. Does would the be, board support going forward with this at this time? I think it's a good idea. Yeah, well, let's run it through and see what happens. Yeah. Cool. Do, do you Her want personnel an board vote? only? Sure. Okay, I make a motion that we uh, um, move forward with. The landfill attendant description. Or hiring another landfill attendant. For right. hiring another landfill attendant. Yeah. It doesn't need to go to the per I'll let you finish. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It would only need to go before the personnel board if you're talking about a different kind of position. If you're going right. to elevate this. But I want to make it, it clear uh, that that is going to be, I mean, that's my thought process is uh, of wanting to support this. Okay, so through the budget process, we should talk yes, about that Yes, we if need, that's what right. you want and, to but do. we need to evolve the job description because we have no job description for this person. And I, I, you know, obviously, when I talked to Jan Amin, she was really, you know, interested in working with us to, you know, try to figure out something. Right. She's always trying to engage the attendants right. in mm -hmm. lots of that's things. Good. I she's, totally get that. No, she's good. I'm on board with that as well. So I, you know, understand her yeah. challenges I mean, I'm, around that. I'm not supportive of just, I mean, yes, we need this from a safety point of view. We need this extra person. But I'm also thinking that we need to address what's coming down the pike to keep, to make sure that our landfill costs are not skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. Because we, then if they're skyrocketing, the money has to come from somewhere. That means either increased fees and bag costs or, you know, coming out of the general fund, your budget. So the idea is to try to, you know, front this so that when we have the recontract with the MRF or we have to go somewhere else, we're in a position to do that. That's so, the so whole idea. So you're saying that this person, if this person that you like applies and gets this job, that we're going to avoid that? Well, I'm hoping that that's the kind of, uh, you know, discussion working with Jan Amin, that we're going to come up with a job description and we'll repost this job description in the next budget year for a, I don't want to, enhanced landfill attendant person. I don't know if we want to say it's a... Uh, yeah. We could call it a recycling coordinator. That's or a recycle or a coordinator, DEP something, programs. something that would right. help us with our costs down the road. But we'd still use that. It would be the point person. The landfill that, no, attendant. that would be oh, our per point person. Or well, that conversation can happen. Yeah. Yes. If, if everyone seems to late. be on board with. All right. Do yes. you, uh, 
hiring an additional I want to get man. to the good stuff. Yeah. No, nah, I'm good. Okay. I really want to get to the good stuff. You guys want to move on to the thank you. For a special thank meeting. you. No, no problem. Yes, because I'm really dying to get down to Section 4. Oh, jeez. I thought no, we were going to go No, no we got the good stuff to do okay. here. Okay. If uh, I could. The motions. Is there going to be any questions from me? On the motions? And any of what you're about to get into? I don't believe so. You can go home. Is that your Yeah, deal? that's pretty much what I'm yes. asking. Yeah, you're good. You can go Kevin, home. thank you. Connor, so. Yes. Kevin, you thank Connor. you for sticking around. Yeah, no, not wrong. Good. Right. I'm Great. sorry. No, no, no. That that I've been Candace beating on you about this. No, that's, that's not Candace. Candace. That's Julie. Okay, she's not here. Okay. No. Well, that's Julie. Julie. Okay, Julie so and Julie. Well, so. that's Julie, and that's Julie, too. Okay. You missed what you came for? Have you all read? Well, I'm sorry. Where it was at the beginning, yes. Well, it's so I'm nice to have you come anyway. Well, it's all set. That's, all that. that's Julie Oh. <laughs> We're moving forward with that one, too. <laughs> We're going to um, collect some money finally. A I'll get a meeting scheduled soon. Okay. So, um, did you all right, do the motions, please. Yet? Yes, oh. minutes are done. Oh, yeah, you did. Now, so we're supposed to do the motions? Yep. There, you've seen these before. Yes, the first one's pretty straightforward. I move the town transfer from free cash to sum of $10,134, excuse me, $143 for the senior yeah. center expense account to fund the Deerfield share. Blah, 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 blah. I would just so what would you need? CIPC, but I wouldn't read it. I would just like to sum it up or read the explanation. So one is the senior center, two is the... Yep, we're moving yeah, money for the funding. The yep, meeting. three is the landfill, and four is the capital improvement planning right, committee and thing. You, is there an explanation here? Oh, the meeting was hard to get through, so I'm trying here to figure you go. out. Here you go, right here. I'd like to, yes, and yep. Skip wanted, Skip wanted me to let you know that the finance committee has looked at all the financial articles and recommended them all at a previous Perfect. meeting, so okay. they're all set. So okay, we're, let's pick who's going to read what. No, we're oh. Uh, what do you mean when the, we get there? This I'll read. Vote. <laughs> now or later? Later. The, Monday the, the night. amendment Monday. to the we've gone round and round I'll on this. Number one. Change oh, to the compensation. Right, oh yeah, you're going to sign yourself. Two. Yep. You'll take number two. Yep. Uh, let's skip. I'll take number three then. Although I don't have the information on that, but I will. We'll get it from Kevin. From Kevin. Kevin, we I'll give it to you. I've got all that information. <laughs> Who's going to do four? <laughs> you do four. That one was too complicated for me. I'll do number five. Well, four. Carolyn should do oh, four. Oh, actually, I'll do four. Yeah, because she's on the committee. And then Kip, who's going to do, do five? Two and three. and what's five? five? You want me to do two and three? Yeah. Five is pretty straightforward. All right. I'll just do two and three, and I'll be all done. All right. Two and three. Who's doing five? You? Uh, you want me to do five? Sure. sure. I'll do it's five. It's your turn. Yep. Okay. So, you're gonna, so Trevor's doing one. One and five. five. Yeah. So can and I? Kim I'll only do two and three. Ends. You only have to do one. Uh, four. Yeah, but that's the one that's. Contentious. Yeah, the one that's complicated. Of course. So, so you, <laughs> you know. Can talk about it, Carolyn. You'll you, explain it perfectly. You know, we've gone round and round yes. on the CIPC bylaw. You d okay, so you, you talked about it. Yeah. Yes. Was it, on t was it televised that meeting? No. The first one was not. Okay. The well, capital improvement be up. was not. We will get this up information up for the public to see and be ready oh. for next Monday's special. We had meeting. voted October 25th to just move forward with the two corrections, although the, the feeling in the committee is that they do definitely want us to address the entire bylaw once Barbara's lawyer gets through it. Yes. You know, the, yes. Kind of actually, I heard from them item. today. The code people—they're ready to go, and I sent right. this to them because they said they Good. would take a look at it. Okay. Okay. Ahead of everything yep. else. But so. So does that mean they're going to incorporate it? Okay. They're going to. They're They'll only the incorporate it if town meeting approves it. This. Right. But as of Monday, if we vote it, would they then put the corrections so into it? Um, for this year? I mean, I don't want another... I can't, I can't answer that right now. I'm not really sure I because I think they'd want to include it with their first report, which, oh, is, coming, okay. which is coming in two weeks. I think, oh, okay. Or the end of the month, they said. All right. yeah, so. I just don't want to go All right, next, the year. next I, item well, is... I don't want to... Uh, just one quick second. Oh. I just, the only thing I, I did want to say about that is that, uh, you know, I'm not going to jump up and down about it, but I think it's going to cause more problems than just leaving it the way it is. No, because um, uh, Kip, I, I, I we've to had, I'm just yeah, but Kip, 
we've had problems with the postings. I know. And, I know. We, and we have no mechanism to address things that come up after December 1st, like the per police roof. So all this does is address things that pop up during the year and eliminate uh, that newspaper posting, which is a problem. Okay. But that doesn't address everything else yeah. that the, still needs to be addressed. Okay. That still right. needs to be addressed. This is only the emergency stuff. All right. Sign sewer commitment and abatements. Yep. So um, do you want me to read this? Yeah, you have to read it. Okay. I think. So uh, this is uh, to the treasurer collector. 11-28-2018, utility um, billing 2019 commitment number one. You are hereby authorized to collect from 889 bills names uh, named in the commitment with the amount set against their respective names, amounting in the aggregate of $611,516.47 to pay over all the monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and make a report of such payment to the town accountant. Uh, we, notice what? this does not include Frontier's billing because we're still working on that um, Okay, because I was just going to say, Irrigation what do we do about the Frontier billing? That's, that's we're, we're working it. We're going to do a separate commitment okay. for them again. All right, yep. that's fine with me then. This is the one to sign. Yeah. Uh, I didn't that want it to be right? forgotten. Was the total amount? No, less that's Frontier. Fine. Less Frontier. Yes, less oh, for the here. first payment for the first commitment. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say we raised that quite a bit. That's <laughs> yes. less than what we got last year. Yep. No, that's just the first half. Uh, did you sign the second one too, Trevor? Oh, there's two there. Yeah, two oh, I'm sorry. Pages. Oh, I didn't see the blue. Yeah, but one we down didn't there. vote. Sorry. Red and blue. Red. We and have blue. to. We have to vote it. We have to vote. Okay. I make a motion. Yep. I and I second it. Already. I thought you did too. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We voted. Yeah, really sealed. We did vote. Yeah, we did vote this already. Wow. Quite but but, but we'll I know that we have to vote the Perfect. new commitment. I got a, a quick little question. Three commissioners. I, I just got to be Please. Confused the way you read it. Uh, they collect it and turn the money over to the town. Uh, Accountant. Accountant. Okay. No. Collect the sound collector. Like, he made us uh, the collector. He made it sound like it was one lump sum. It, they turn it over. As I don't it comes know why. In, you know, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, once it's all done. Yeah. Like one month, so I'm like, yeah. Hang on. They do. We hang on to yeah. bring a big bag of money. <laughs> okay. Good point. No, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. I want to get to the good stuff. Sure. Absolutely. Yep. I'll do the five. I'll do that too. I'll do both. I really want to get to the good stuff. Because all everyone else is so. Can I make a motion for the for Candace first? What are we doing here? We're we're going to appoint new employees. Trevor Trevor wants to go home, so he's. Can you tell? I want to get Connor home. He's probably got to drive ten hours. He wants to quit before he's even up in the. You have in your packet the. Resumes for um, the new librarian yep. uh, is recommended by the trustees and um, assistant new position, assistant town administrator yes. is recommended by the search so committee. The new employee appointments for the library directors, Candace right. Bradbury, Carlin. Carlin. So I make a motion. Uh, I'm so excited to make this motion and welcome and um, uh, and, and have hired and appoint uh, Candace Bradbury Carlin to be our new Tilton Library um, uh, Library Director. Yay. I second that. I think it's wonderful too. I'm, I'm, a wonderful I'm really always excited. leery that when you, you know, you want to make sure you have a really good person. So I'm so excited I'm too excited that we have um, someone that's equally enthusiastic as and, and really nice. Well, I, I unfortunately haven't met her, but I'll, I'll carry your enthusiasm. I think you will. When you yeah, meet her, like, she's so, a great person. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> well, it's also, just really exciting to have a good person. I also want to note that um, you're not meeting again until after our library director of 10 years. How long has Sarah been here? It um, leaves. It's so. been a while. Yeah. Um, I, yes. I want to say it's been a pleasure working with her. She has a great, quiet sense of humor. Sorry to see her go, but yes. I'm, I'm also 
glad for her. And thank you for mentioning <laughs> that. We will yes, miss Sarah yes. very much. Yes, yes. But that's what I mean. You get, you know, you always are nervous. Yeah, we were so oh, fortunate to have Sarah I know. serve our community for that amount of time and, and do wonderful things. Um, so we'll miss her as well. The next appointment is the assistant town administrator, Connor. Yes, Robichard. come on up. Robichard. 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 Connor, Connor, thank you. It's nice everybody. to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for coming tonight so people can see a face. And, and yeah. sitting through the whole meeting. I'll smile for the I know. Yeah, they're, all, they're everywhere. I wonder who he was. My, yes. My, my first question is, do you realize what you're getting into? <laughs> I think he does that every day. I watched the videos day. online. Yes, and he, he actually, he forward. did. He's watched our meetings. <laughs> yeah, he did, yeah. So I'm Connor Robichaud. I've worked at the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission for two and a half, three years now. Uh, I worked on a wide variety of projects. I think that's why it was interesting to the committee, at least. Uh, yes. I've worked in procurement, um, grant administration, and grant writing. I've also done some planning work. Um, I was drawn to this position because I think I can carry on that sort of varied workload um, and opportunity to wear a lot of hats, especially in a town that's as busy as you guys are. Yeah. Um, um, are you uh, procurement certified? Uh, my certification is like in the mail as we speak. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Oh, that's a huge I took, relief. So Thank you. I took all the classes. They just, I think they just voted to approve people. So it should be oh, coming out soon. Oh, wonderful. That's great. Thank you. I wasn't sure I about asked, that. Is this is a full-time position. Yeah. Yes. And it, it includes planning so, officer in that. So good. we have talked about that. The things at the planning board. Yes. Could definitely need yes. To yes. 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 Great. Yeah. So what I've heard in the through the interview process is that I'd be supporting the admin office and also adding some staff support to the planning and development end of things. Yes. Right. The land use Well, boards. it's, it's right. a huge gap. There is no real point person. Right. Right. And so people come in and they're like wandering around. And, yeah. Especially, you know, I think the building commissioner is coming up for retirement. Y yes. Right. Uh, or, we, we or are we're hiring a new building uh, inspector right now. Okay. And eventually you know, at some point, the uh, commissioner as well. Yeah. One of the things that I, I would like to No, we're to hiring see. a building commissioner now. That's what, what we're looking for. That's what right. the job is that we are hiring oh, for. I'm confused about that. Sorry. That's okay. We well, think it was we've discussed this earlier in the day. There's a oh, lot of confusion. Okay, good. Good. Well, yeah, it wasn't in the job description, but also if we're hiring... I'm sorry, what, what wasn't? A building commissioner said building inspector. No, commissioner is, is the job that has been posted. Well, yeah. then... then then that ad is also deficient because we can't hire a building commissioner unless they're certified. Right. You cannot hire somebody and then they get the they, certification. They have 18 the months to no, get it. No, you cannot. You can hire a local, yeah. You yeah, can hire a local, this. but you can't hire oh. a, a building commissioner. Well, they act as your building commissioner while they're They cannot building. act as you. I talked to BBRS today. You can. You have, well, we'll sort it out. Can I talk I to somebody? Yeah, let's. I let's, want to talk anyway, to I'm talking to Rocky. Let's, yeah, let's. let's <laughs> it's down okay. the road. Right now to so, be respectful. anyways, look uh, what you're getting into. You know, the, at the planning, at, from the planning board's point of view, I know. Uh, what would be very helpful, uh, I'd like to see you accomplish through Wendy and, and uh, Diana, is that to be familiar with what applicants need so they can come to you and say, what do I need to do to do this? Okay. Because they get bits and pieces and people often come to the board. Sometimes they come to the wrong boards or they come not prepared for what I, they, they're looking for and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, no, that makes a lot of sense to be able to walk them through the process so they're not confused, frustrated. And, yeah. and I, I will, you can reach out to me uh, because it, I've been an advocate of trying to keep all of our boards uh, you know, in their own lanes. Mm -hmm. And it, historically in this town, it's been an applicant will come before one board and they, well, we really can't make a decision because we don't know what the other board's going to do. And then you go to the other board, well, we don't really know what they're going to do. You know, all the boards can make decisions on their portions and make it contingent with the approval of another board. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can come for site plan review, but if you need a variance or a special permit from the ZBA, we can approve that site plan but it's contingent upon approval of that. And that's what everybody really needs to, to follow through. Yeah, to have a point person for that, I think, could be really mm -hmm. useful. Oh, yes. you, good. We're so good. excited to have you. Um, so I, can I, we, I'm can, not can sure. we get a second? Oh, yes, second. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's lock it in first. Let's yeah, lock then. it in. Let's get it before we give them a task. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, I, this is December 5th, this um, Homeland Security um, 
Cybersecurity Preparedness Conference. And it's not beginning until the 17th. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, I didn't, you can go. <laughs> she's, she's trying to on your work. own time. He has another job. Yeah, yeah. But he, he's going to I know, I was wishing tonight. I'm, I'm already, I'm sending him uh, other that? information about training. Can you hand that to Trevor? Sure. Connor. Oh, oh. I guess you're going too, huh? I'm not mailing. Well, I didn't know <laughs> if you maybe you would go. That's your. I, I, when is I'm, this? I'm just not interested, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just put, Emergency. No, no, it's cybersecurity. Oh, cybersecurity. But when it's, it's, I don't even answer my phone, so I guess I'm not good at that. Um, Has he officially started? No. I start on the 17th. No, this this is just randomly if he wants to spend a day doing no, no, cybersecurity. No, I'm working for the town now. What is this? I think we should send the recycling coordinator to the cybersecurity. Is it during the day? It doesn't say. It yes, doesn't it's say during what the day. I'm working What's through it? the. 13th no of the job Cyber down Security down. Preparedness yeah. Conference fully, on December he's fully 5th employed at in UMass Worcester right now. So. Oh, God, I need glasses. You've already done that. And it's, yeah. it's demystify cybersecurity, effective information sharing, and critical security controls, emerging cyber okay. threats, steps to, you know, explore regional. The idea is that somebody that's interested in this stuff would, would try to be a little bit is proactive. Lori interested? We, she's our EMD. Um, oh, but maybe I don't that. Know. Okay, so let's stick with this. Thank we're you. <laughs> we were all excited about Connor. We had really good applicants. We did. We did. did real well. We're very well, excited. It's a good you. fit. I, I'm, I'm references really were really excited terrific. that you're interested in doing this, and I'm, I really welcome you aboard. When is your first day? December 17th. December 17th. Stop in and say hi. Yes, yes. we will. <laughs> when we figure out where you're going to be. <laughs> oh, I actually don't know where any offices are. Oh, that's okay. Trevor might give up his Yeah, I'll give up my office yeah. for you. If you'll stay, you, you can have my spot. Well, yeah. we have different we'll thoughts. We'll we're going to figure this out. I, I leave it up to those in charge. Um, Very good. Thank you. Thank nice you. meeting you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Have a thank safe trip back. Staying. All right, next on our agenda, the thank uh, you for Town coming. Building Advisory Committee charge. We, we did this. Did yes. Oh, I was okay. on there twice. Then uh, the notice for the Mass Coalition Police IUPA yep. AFL CIO agreement, Article 28. I don't, oh, that's the old agenda. Union negotiations. Yep, so this. Uh, okay, so Diana, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Diana. So basically, I just. So your current term of agreement with your union, your police union, has notice provisions if you want to reopen the contract, um, which I had put in. In, uh, in article, in the term of agreement 20, 28, 1 and 2. Uh, if either party wishes to negotiate changes, then you must uh, give them notice and begin those negotiations. And so we, by July, January 15th, you must give them the notice. And we've sent it, to, and council has it, and they do see some things they would, they would need to address. Okay. okay. So Sounds good. you would take care of it, or do you yeah. need us to do a vote? No, we'll send the notice, but I guess I just put it on there so you can start thinking about, you know, what, what you might want to do in terms of your negotiating team. Usually, once we send the notice, we set up a meeting for ground rules to set ground rules, and during that time, we decide who the negotiating team is going to be and um, discuss the meeting schedules and things like that. So before too long, okay. I want to know what that information is. Before we go, and I know um, all kids are asleep by now, so I can say this. I have a few things. I, I will. Can I hit these quick? Or do you want to go, go first? Go I'll forget ahead. this if I don't. Santa's workshop, December 8th, <laughs> Deerfield Elementary School, uh, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, children's crafts, 12.30, Santa arrives by fire truck. Uh, 1 to 2 p.m., um, Steve Corning, juggling magic stunts, bring your camera Did picture with Santa. For that um, <laughs> we, we may not have. Uh, register for calls from the North Pole. Um, make a card for a veteran. Oh, that's so cute. Bring a uh, non-perishable item for the food bank, snack bar. It's five bucks per child. Um, each child will receive a free cooking and drink. So, um, sponsored by the Deerfield Recreation Department. Please, please come. Sounds like fun. I'll ask Michelle to bring me. It is fun. Well. It is. I've been many times. It's a great oh. time. Oh, you got something um, else? Ice skating. So all Deerfield residents and adult must accompany any child under the age of 13. Um, this is ice skating uh, sponsored by the Deerfield Rec Department. Um, 
let's see, and this would be Sunday Where? nights from December 2nd through January 27th. Um, Where? And this is at Eco Brook School. And they, they open it up the, the rink to uh, children and anybody uh, oh. every, every, um, every year. So it's really, really generous of them to do that. So please take advantage. That's and and so. can I just say that um, Friday, November 30th, 6 o'clock to 7.30 out here on the ta town common is the lighting ceremony for um, mm -hmm. the town common yep. that the women's club does. And uh, so it's very exciting. It's a wonderful family event. Um, and it's just so nice and so thoughtful that people do this. So um, yep, please, please come, come. Please enjoy come. it. It's live music, food, you know, and happy times. It's a great family event. So I hope people will come. 6 okay. p.m. Friday. Um, so uh, going back to Santa, um, just checking with the board on a holiday schedule, mm -hmm. um, both Christmas and New Year's, obviously. They share the same day of the week, it's Tuesday. I'd like to recommend that you allow the offices to close at noon on the day before Christmas, but no special schedule other than our regular 9 to 4 on um, the day before New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, actually, the day. Okay. Uh, sounds so, good to me. I would, I would make that That's kind of based is what other yep. town halls are doing and city halls are doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It makes okay. fun. People um, enjoy their families. Second item, I don't know if you're going to be there, Carolyn, at 1030 on Friday for the MVP Action Group um, meeting. I was going to try to make it. I might okay. be a dash late because I have a 930, but uh, I think I can at, at the Mill Village or here. Um, I thought we were going to start here, but I will check on that. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I can meet if if we're going to Mill. I'll let you or, know. I'll I'll send oh, an email. Yeah. Then again. Okay. And um, I just my idea was to make sure I met that Brian or whoever it is is coming. Who, right. Who's the guy? I would have said Brian too, but I now you have me doubting that he's our representative, that we're, the field right. representative someone, from this, the anyway. program we get the grant yeah. from. So the and Chris Curtis will be here for that. Um, also, um, special town meeting is next Monday night, 7 o'clock here. Lisa Mead, town council, will be here at 1 as part of the quarterly, we're behind quarters now, but of uh, council coming out and spending the day. So I sent an email out to department heads, uh, committee chairs, um, and to you um, letting you know that she'll be here if you have questions or um, like to meet with her, let me know so I can coordinate that. it for now. We're still the uh, TIF agreement with Dumont still Pending. up in the air. I'm waiting to hear back from them. Who are we waiting to hear from them for? Do we never did agree on anything to put forward. No. We well, offered, I told them what you know, the board wanted to do. You had talked about it and um, well, we based on what you did, I sent them what that was what New England we, Natural we, Bakers we had. had consensus, sort of. And we're waiting to hear back from them. Sort of. It, no. I, I mean, I feel like it's fine. So. So that's still waiting to hear back from them on that. So the next meeting is what, the 12th? And um, do we have anything after that? Well, no. I was wondering that's if <laughs> would we done. would we could we meet the fifth oh, and the twelfth? Oh. Do can we meet I've the got, fifth? Yeah, and the twelfth. I actually have uh, Union Thirty Eight negotiations. Okay. So well, I may bow out of this meeting, but the twelfth, mm -hmm. which this meeting or that meeting? Uh, this meeting. Is it is the is the twelfth our warrant cycle? Yeah, I should be. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I could come in and sign. It's your regular meeting. You're back what time? This is six o'clock. We can keep it up. Oh, keep a it at small six. Small agenda. Yeah, we're yeah, staying at six. six now. Yeah, so I'll, I, I should, I, I think it's at four thirty. It's just, I think it's the start, so it may not last. Right. You might just be might doing be just ground rules. Kind of ground right. rule thing. So okay. So this is at six. So if I'm a little late, I'm a little late. Okay. When was our next one? And what about after that? Twelfth. The twelfth and. And what we're we doing fifth? Well, that was my question. Well, no, I, then you run into the well, no, I didn't we really was, want to no. do the day after Christmas, but if nobody else, I mean, I don't know what people wanted to do. We could do the 19th or the 5th. Oh, or, or we could go or the 2nd. If we don't really have anything important. I have the 2nd at the school committee on the 2nd, but. 
Oh, that's right. I forgot. I'm sorry, Trevor. It's all right. Uh, so I could do the 26th if you want to meet after Christmas. The day after Christmas not so bad, is it? Yes. I still have a house We're full of people. We're back at work. And oh, yeah. Yeah, but well, you bring them all down here. Let them see How about, what you do. But that's okay. You know, you guys, you only need a quorum. That's if right. you two guys can we'll, go. We'll wing it. We'll wing it. We'll yeah. I'm, I'm we'll just, I'm going to. It'll you, be a five. You, I only we'll have my family court. home Enjoy for a little them. while. Enjoy yeah. them. That's fine. I, um. I actually, my son Sam is coming home. So. Oh yeah. 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 That's my Great. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Bet. No, that's fine. Well, so I kind of we'll don't want to have a meeting. I haven't seen him for a few months. All right. We'll I make just, all kinds of decisions. <laughs> small chance. There's a small chance I'll be admit it. Admit it. There is a small chance I'll be deployed. Um, I've told them I prefer to wait longer, but I'll let you know as soon as I know something. Why? What happened? When will you? Uh, everything. Oh, There's gosh. disasters all over the place. California. Would you, you go to be California? deployed here in Deerfield? I am deployed here in Deerfield. That's why I am here. <laughs> okay. She wears her combat boots. And, um, yes. Let's see. Right. The, so, that's why. Does anyone on the select board have any announcements to make? Well, I just no. want to say you thank you. Nope. No, nope. I just. You don't? I, I, well, I want to say thank you to Adam Sokolowski and Lori McComb, um, because, Lori Lankowski and McComb, because we finished up the um, risk communication messaging. Oh, and great. Lori is following up on the code red and trying to get that done. So we're, we're really working on stuff, the risk communication and, and trying to get that organized as one of the things that came out of the tabletop. So I'm really proud. Thank you. And I want to say thank you to them. Um, I had a Massachusetts Association of Conservation District annual meeting um, uh, 10 days ago. And um, we, we voted to agree to keep advocating for our EWP money that we use on the river um, under the new farm bill, which we know the farm bill expired September 30th. But I am not even, it's even a waste of time to drive, take a train down and work on the farm bill, you know, go down to Washington and work on the farm. This is my, this would be my third farm bill, and I'm, I'm just, it's, it's such a disaster down there, so. Oh, I'm going to have to go happened. there now. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. MAPCO is, can, um, we got new monies, um, and we've jumped through the hoops, so we're hoping to get a vaccine, you know, apply in the grant money for a vaccine refrigerator for, that we, we can use at South County. So it will be wonderful. It will be a great thing okay. if something happens. Um, December 6th is, uh, FERCOG is doing that state of preparedness um, program, and I was hoping you guys would go. And then on December 13th is the um, rural issues listening session that I th at GCC. I think is really important we go and we get organized on what we want to do as issues. So maybe we can discuss that on the 12th, put that on the agenda item, is what, what do we as a board want to kick? For, I mean, I can go and I can witch at everybody and his brother. But what, what is this again? The, the, at what time? What day? Um, December thirteenth. It's a day out. It's Thursday after our December twelfth meeting. Oh, so maybe we meeting. can say we can vote something on the twelfth. So I can say this is what the Deerfield Board of Selectmen feel is a, you know, I mean, I can speak as a Deerfield Select Board. You know, I always go to those things. But I think it's important to bring huge things. This this foundation education budget needs to be redone and it's going to get redone but we need to have some you know like a waiver from the nonprofits and stuff like that I mean we got to figure out some mm -hmm. different changes um, two things uh, one is I'd like to um, reinstate some kind of a small budget for EMD mm -hmm. and I've talked to Lori about that um, yeah. and what were you just saying rural yeah. Rural policy. Oh, I had two things in mind. Sorry, I'm tired. When it gets this late. <laughs> well, it's not so much the lateness, but the longness, yeah. <laughs> the length. All right. the oh, I know, I know, and this is critical. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> if um, you might have heard from Chris, Kurt, uh, Chris Collins about this, um, there's a, there yes. appears to be some threat Terrible. to funding uh, through some FCC yeah. decision that would threaten um, monies that would sustain community access, which, as we know here, uh, provides the whole thing coverage for a town government. It comes through the it comes right? through Comcast. our contract 
these monies all over the country come through the contract that you have with the cable provider. And the cable provider. And I'm not sure, and I'll have to go and read through it for myself. But um, and you said that the MMA did send out a tweet. Yes. I don't, don't tweet, so I don't know about this. But I think this is pretty critical. I think sh being able to absolutely televise um, is, local government it's, and it's community the whole business the transparency is very thing will go away. Uh, All the money. The current administration saying that they don't want to spend this money. It's the, it's not their money. It's 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 the it's Comcast and right. That's and what like I'm that. saying. It's Comcast yes. saying they don't want to spend the money. I'm sure they, they lobby they, for they it. Want, so they want Washington to right increase now. the rates and they don't want to send any money not. to to back so to the community. So I would like they to see They have a good listening ear right now. I meant to see the MMA thing so we could join in on that. I think it's critical. But I think to that's a, an important thing to say because that's that's how you have transparency. Mm -hmm. People know what's going on. I can't imagine if we can't get anything um, you know right. covered again. Right. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yes, that's a big issue. I mean it's it's no different on the whole mess of the farm bill kind of thing. Anything that's locally good is gonna get is getting trashed. It's terrible. Years. Maybe. All right. <laughs> Last thing on our agenda is public comment. You must Rocky. have something. To Rocky, <laughs> after being here. <laughs> Thank you so much for out. staying the whole. I feel like it's really good that you're here. <laughs> uh, Two million dollars in marijuana sales. Okay. Nice. So what's that come down to? Thirty thousand dollars for each community. That's correct. You know, and if they went for the three percent. In two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just to throw that out there. Just in two weeks. <laughs> Well, that's only two competing for business. I have a friend, oh, who, I have I a friend who drove yeah, from right. Albany, yeah. and I said, Illegal. you've got a problem. Yeah, you can't <laughs> yes, drive home. So. I, I will not keep you, you tonight, can, but I actually. went to the Tick Symposium oh, oh, all-day <laughs> tick event, <laughs> statewide <laughs> tick <laughs> oh, Okay. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It was very informative.